to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that we've brought about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's a- It means something. It means something. And they got away. Yeah. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic Reversal! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact. They were all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Special Wednesday edition. I'm going to be out tomorrow, so I wanted to make sure I uh, made some room for this for this fine fellow to come on, and uh, very excited I might have. Uh, John from Baroness is going to be on, and I'm very, very stoked to talk to him. Wanted to get in before the record came out, uh, which is usually, usually a good idea uh, to, to do that. Uh, I, I have avid fans of the show have noted that I have a tendency to for years, I would interview people right before the documentary came out. And that's less advisable uh, to do it that way. But anyway, any way you slice it, welcome to Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I am your host, Conan Neutron. I'm a rock and roll lifer that has been touring recording for 23 years, most known for the band Conan Neutron, The Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect, but who may not be household names. This is episode 354. And if this is your first time listening to the show, archives of it are available for free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding at protonicreversal.com. However, if you want to support the show and get episodes sooner, $1 a month at patreon.com slash protonicreversal will gladly achieve that goal. If you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to like, subscribe on your platform of choice, share it around the internet, or even leave a review. All that helps people discover the show. Beats back the almighty algorithmic overlords, and this is the darn nice thing to do. When you do boring things, it's it's nice to throw in some hyperbole there. Algorithmic overlords is uh, maybe one of my most hyperbolic moments on this show, and that's saying a lot. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to this, this next guy. Um, uh, John Baisley, Baroness, they have, they have a new record called Stone, and uh, it's first of all, it's not a color, so get that out of your head right now, uh, but it's very cool, and uh, yeah, let's, let's just get right down to it, man. Let's, uh, let's talk to John. John, welcome to the show. Appreciate you. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, cool record. Uh, <laughs> w- were you... <sighs> My understanding, so it's hard to name anything, right? Uh, certainly a band, but like uh, like records and things like that. When you have like the color thing, that's kind of an easy thing to fall back on, I guess, right? Like you can be like, oh, until you, run, until you start getting to like fuchsia and like the really unpopular colors or something along those lines. Uh, was was Were you looking at this as a break from that motif with this one? Like did the song just not fit a color or what was, what was the rationale behind that? Well, you know, the original idea of, the original idea for the sort of color sequenced uh, albums was to essentially create in over six discs uh, like the rainbow just like red right. orange yellow green blue violet so we had effectively gotten to the end of that sequence that cycle and i think that with our you know with our last record it was really nice it felt really nice to wrap that up and to have finished something that took you know nearly 15 years to uh, accomplish but was you know a very very deep long project to be part of so i think what we were excited to do with stone was to have sort of turned that corner and uh to be at the beginning essentially of a new sequence of records sure sure and to kind of capstone that because yeah golden gray was um before COVID even right as, as uh, if i remember correctly i mean every and so uh, it's a different epoch of time for a lot of reasons, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and and you've 
been known for you know you've you've always pushed your not just mu your musicianship but your different ideas musically uh, but this is the first one i think the, the like somebody isn't new at this point for this record right it seems like for a while it's like there's already some some someone new on each record or not new to music but new to like being <laughs> part of the band yeah and and honestly that's it's not the most you know that's that's not what we're and we're not excited when there's so much change in the band. Like what's what's always been, right. I think the goal, but hasn't you know we never really gotten to until this point was just to have some stability in our lineup so that we could take the chemistry that we you know you know that we make with our first record as a group and then sort of catapult that into the next thing and uh, to evolve in a way that's interesting to us, but also genuine and now you know really really has. Uh, had the opportunity to see that chemistry deepen. So how sure and and well and you've been able to kind of look holistically at the entire at the entire discography of the Bangs. You did that whole Your Baroness tour, right? Where, uh, which is an incredible accomplishment. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, no, that was great. One can imagine an incredible effort as well, because uh, for for the, the uninitiated, kind of an unorthodox uh, way of going about it, and the fact that. It, these are smaller shows for like the hardcore fans uh, and then people got to basically pick what you're going to be playing more or less you know within reason uh and out of the entire catalog including stuff that maybe you hadn't revisited in a while right right yeah so i think you know i think the cool thing about that was that we uh when that, that idea came to the forefront it was like okay well this it's a it is a little bit of a gimmick right sure uh, yeah yeah but it seemed like one, you know, it seemed like a, the sort of the idea that we could really enjoy and have fun with. So, you know, the idea was that the first 10 songs of, uh, of our set were going to be the, you know, the top 10 in that city based on a voting list that included literally every song we'd ever recorded. Right. So in order to, you know, <laughs> we just, just even was, hear, hearing it about it is like, yeah. it's, it's like, sounds so exhausting. I'm like, wow. That's it was, <laughs> it was a pretty, and it, honestly, it was a pretty intense thing to undertake. So, you know, it, I, I do laugh about it now because, because uh, we really had our work cut out for us, but we, what we had to do was we had to learn all of, all of the songs throughout our band's history. Right. And be able to play them. Now, Clearly, there's going to be some songs that we understand are never ever going to make it onto that list, so right. we we can sort of avoid them. You know, we could cut it down, but it's but, still. But even then, you got five <laughs> albums worth of stuff, yeah. man. Like I mean, it was a <laughs> tremendous amount of material. So we would, you know, we we put the we 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 just were trying to make a really like interesting, compelling night. We were really trying yeah. to put ourselves, you know, hold ourselves accountable to you know to a big challenge uh, in, in that time period. So. Uh, what what ended up happening, I think, was really cool, is that we had to become so familiar with so much of the material over the you know breadth and history of this band that I would you know we would do that first set of ten, then Gina and I would play thirty minutes of acoustic, yeah, while yeah seven yeah. Nick got to hang out in the wings, and then they come out, and we <laughs> take would, some we video, sort of, <laughs> yeah, we would, we would sort of like come back in with you know maybe eight or ten minutes of like a noise jam sort of thing yeah and then we would just play whatever we wanted from there on out and so i made so i made it uh i made it so that every night we would play literally the same number of songs from each of our five records and oh uh, interesting okay it, it was it was really really difficult you know to yeah to do that but it, i think it was so healthy for us because it made it made it like this, this like really sort of epic athletic challenge to learn, to learn and have comprehension, and then to be able to perform it in a way that you know it needed to be done, you know, with a little, with a little bit of conviction, a little bit of passion. Yeah, it just took rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. We just had to play constantly, and I think it put us in this amazing musical shape uh, that we then sort of took that energy, uh, and, and that's you know that's sort of you know that's sort of where we're at now it's, it's like we've got a lot deeper catalog cuts that we can pull from now and make the show sure. even more sort of hand tailored to the audience or whatever. and even when you're composing stuff for you know for the new one like it, it seems like if you're kind of revisiting everything everywhere all at once right that you can kind of like hone in on certain things 
maybe with a, a modern understanding of, of what the band is and uh, approach it differently and, and kind of maybe find, in, in some cases, maybe find the value in some of the stuff or just sort of reappraise it with different eyes and ears. That is a very succinct way of putting it. Yes, that's exactly, I mean, that's a, that's exactly, <laughs> I don't think I could put it that way, uh, that, that clearly. Uh, but yes. Well, thanks. You've been a lovely audience, everybody. That's all the time we got. Yeah. Just, just figure this out. There we go. Okay, decoded. No, no, but, but uh, honestly, that, that was, you know, having been through so many lineup changes over the, the yeah. history of this band and really wanting to keep, out, you know, something in the core of us true, true to form at all times, it means, that, it means that when there's a lineup, when somebody new has joined, we really have to make it a full-bodied thing because, it's, because we all contribute. We all have to put right. an almost an unnecessary amount of like energy into into these you know into this music and these performances. So to have learned the hist you know to have forced all of ourselves and I and I definitely include myself in going back to the history of music that we've written. Uh, it, it definitely it most definitely gave us a new understanding for what was cool and special about the old uh, you know our older stuff and uh, you know furthermore allowed us to take where we are now and blend that in in a convincing way you know, which is which means like effortlessly you know yeah to do it in such a way that it's it's um you, you get to be your kind of final form of of, of what it is you're, you're trying to do and, and and then see like where that takes you next I, and i'm just thinking about the fact that like i happen to i happen to have seb on with phil uh of trans am <laughs> <Awesome. laughs> the night i think it was the night after he joined baroness and to his credit he's oh, a really? pro He's wow. a pro. He said nothing about it on the show. I know. Even he's, later, he's very, he's very clever. Like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was, I was impressed. Uh, but like, it, but the first thing I thought of it is, well, first thing I thought of is, well, Seb's an amazing drummer. Oh my, oh my god! But yeah. he's also a different kind of drummer. Like he's got, a, he's got a totally different kind of vibe. And yeah. now, of course, there's a record of like what that sounds like. Right? We all know what that sounds <laughs> like. That's not well, like, like you know, I'm, power I'm, I'm still, I'm still very good friends with Alan, and yeah. so. You know, Alan and I and Seb have like even even sort of talked about this because the thing about Alan was he was a you know a, an extremely powerful natural rock drummer yeah who fought that you know that like bestial essence of himself so hard that it was all about like playing the the hardest yeah. most you know sort of like lack of a better term like masculine kind of disco dance beats and so he was constantly trying to fight his nature and you know. It, it turned him into, I think, a, a very interesting drummer, a very cool drummer. Yeah. And helped define, you know, very much helped define exactly what our sound is. But then of Seb, who was, you know, sort of more motoric, more like, you know, sort of indie, cool disco dance. And he's got, that's his wheelhouse. And then he comes in, you know, he comes into Baroness. And it was kind of hilarious because he, explo <laughs> he exploded immediately into a rock drummer. Right. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, he he is a rock dude, like hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean, like there's no it's doubt. It's hilarious. It's yeah. yeah I'm la I'm laughing because it's hilarious how rock and roll he is. Yeah, but 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 it's you wouldn't necessarily know that. Like if you're like, oh, are those the ro the robot guys. Like what are they? Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's also you know he's also very he's also very smart and very serious. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's, he's very, it's very serious. Cool, yes. Yeah, absolutely. it's a very it's a very cool um, thoughtful fella. <laughs> yeah, it's a, but it's it makes him a very uh unique and incredible sort of you know drummer persona right no absolutely and it, it definitely invoked the band with a uh a, not not even just like a, a a different kind of energy that also kind of was adding on to what was already there too and allowed you to kind of go off in some different areas yeah you know? yeah it's, i mean it's 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 been i've i've been very you know very fortunate in my career to have like essentially worked with two drummers uh, and for them both to have had such distinct, you know, sort of natural styles that are, diff you know, different, but there's a lot of like, you know, there are a little, a lot of points of similarity. It's, it's been really interesting. For them. Yeah. Yeah. So, and again, really come, come, coming back to the Your Baroness story too, and going back to like all those old stuff. I mean, God, even some of those, those, those early songs are pretty intense and you had a very yeah. different vocal style. I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> Like you seem like you have a less damaging vocal style now. That's good, you know. Uh. I, I don't honest, honestly don't know. Honestly don't know. <laughs> um, but but you know, again, to have you know to have revisited our early our early records and, and you know even those really sort of savage, 
um, sort of crusty punk uh, like yeah. EPs. The, gr- the really grindy ones, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that was that's part of who that's part of who I am, you know, as a, yeah. as a musician. So it's you know I think it's important to try to capture that you know earlier form of yourself and to, like to learn how to understand to use it in your modern context. It's it's sort of a challenging thing, you know. I think for any artist who's been around for you know now two decades, which seems ridiculous to me. You know, it's it's now I now have to look back at that version of us and uh, and yeah, you know, like you said, appraise it sort of in you know in the contemporary context. It's it's fun. meet it on its own terms almost. Yeah, right? absolutely. You know? it's, and yeah. it's been it's been awesome. You know, it's been awesome to sort of by you know by looking to the past, unburdening myself, you know, in the present. It sounds very like romantic. I, I mean, it, like, literally, <laughs> you know, it, it is yeah. quite, you know, it's, it's allowed me to more freely express, you know, who we are now and, you know, not feel like I've, you know, run out of steam, but also, you know, constantly seeing new places for our music to go. And uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Well, and because no matter how many records you put out, there's always going to be someone that, uh, you know, is, is discovering, like, you know, the Red Album or something the first time. And that's what they're engaging with. And that's what's happening sure. to them right now. And that's sure. – which is why the the um, the whole thing of, like, opening it up, like, almost like a, all right, what do you all want to hear, you know? <laughs> like yeah, it's, yeah, but, but that becomes, like, I, I don't know, it had to be, it had to be sort of a – I had to take that as a more of a as a challenge. As a challenge, as a, sure, yeah, yeah, more as a challenge than as a you know reflection of what makes sense to me. It just was. This is. Yeah. I wonder if this. I wonder if this will, you know, be beneficial to us. Musically. Yeah, I, I, you, it, like, because, right. because clearly it has that potential. But clearly, clearly, trying to learn your your back catalog so that you can pull it out means that you sharpen you know, you sharpen those tools that, that perhaps have been out of use for years. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah. rediscovering that and then, you know, re putting these pieces together in, you know, in a new way is, I think, I think that's what this new record of ours is about. You're working a different muscle group, right? Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the leg day of uh, yeah. back catalog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and that's fascinating too, because I mean, were there any songs that you were like, Oh God, I hope they don't pick that one. Were they were they like either because it was difficult or because you were just like I just don't want to play that one? Or... No, I think I think we I think this I think we 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 reveled in the challenge, you know. Right. I this is probably just by virtue of the fact that I'm I'm just not a perfect musician. I'm not a perfect performer. I sort of you know like okay, if that's the case, then why not lean into trying things that might not connect every night. In right. order that you, in order that you work them out in the in the environment that you're used to, working your working through your music. So if, you know you, you're not going to be able to make, take those no. kinds of risks on a festival set where you have a half hour to play, right? <laughs> no, and I and like uh, I've learned I've learned that the hard I learned that yeah. the hard, okay. We finally right. we were in Europe we were in Europe last summer. Yeah, and uh, I had finally like acquiesced to you know doing a all killer no filler kind of set and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'll be damned if it didn't work you know so yeah i, I get it i get it now um but there's something but to yeah. be said too for keeping it exciting for yourself also i mean like sure. you, you know and, and you know something for the deep cuts for the for the hardcore fans too now and again but also there's yeah, that and i i don't want to i don't want to lose my romanticism that you can like bring out old song back to life i mean sure. it might it, it yeah. might be it might be pissing in the wind. Who, who knows? Who knows? But I wrote it. I th- well, I think it's good. I think it's got value. I think it never took off or whatever. And yeah. And you know, also I, I just sort of like bands that do uh, who put on headlining performances where the where the deep cuts are what's exciting about it. Uh, I would never, for a lot of reasons, never characterize myself as a huge Aerosmith fan. But I did. <laughs> Happened to see them uh, for a thing for a reason uh, that I was like, fine, yeah, I'll go, I'll go see Aerosmith, and they opened with Combination, which is like, I was like, that did I did not have that on my bingo card. And honestly, well, first of all, they played one of the. It was like this white man blues, like just a god awful ear cancer they set in the middle. It was one of the worst things I've ever heard. But they stayed away from all the Desmond Child stuff. 
sure. They 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 kept it like rocks, toys in the attic. I was like, okay. these guys know um, how to put on a good show. Like I I was yeah, honestly yeah, impressed. Sure, sure. I was like. For sure. This is good, except for again, except for the blues part. That was horrible. No, 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 Just I get it. And, then, and that's like, let's let's face it. That's that that that. It's either you know in 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 the old school veterans. Yeah. It's usually the blues set. In the more recent veterans, it's like you know, and for, you know, for like the Foo Fighters level. Yeah. It's cover songs. It's just like they uh, love. I'm like. I, 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 All right. at core, I do understand it. I do get it, guys. Yeah, but, yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> it's like we'd rather you hear should. one of your songs, man. Come yeah. on. Fucking at two brute, you know? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Jesus it's, it's, Christ. There, there's oh. someone that's like, this is the only time they're ever going to see you. You're going to mess around doing uh, Never Going to Give You Up. Okay, fine. Whatever. <laughs> know. You know, like, I guess it's. It, it, cra- it, it, it cracks me up, and I'm like, I hope, I hope, I hope I don't ever get there. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope I don't ever like fall over that side of the cliff. I don't think right, right, like I don't that. As possible, it's just like, God, you got to dust off every every song you think is a hit from an era you weren't part of, or or worse, a medley. Yeah. Oh my God, when people are doing the like. Oh, we're gonna do this and the LA woman and no, stop, 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 stop. Somebody should be around wow. and be like, no, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, yeah. don't. Nobody's looking for that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a weird turn that that I think modern rock music has taken. So. Yeah, it really is, and and, and it, it feels it, like a pop move. That's why. It feels yeah, like a pop move. yeah, yeah. It's 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 the pop you list move rather than yes. the populist move. <laughs> sure. But but I think exactly. that it's it, it's notable to. Well, because there's there's art versus entertainment, right? And and uh, you know, m- talk about it all the time. I do. It's it's most of my favorite bands. You know, you get you a band that can do both. <laughs> but like, yeah. But, but but here's the here's the thing: is pure entertainment is superficial, anemic fluff. Yeah. And true art is really hard to absorb. Yeah. It, exactly. It's it gets. How many records that are like now codified as one of the best records of all time, and nobody either people were actively against it when it came out, or more likely just baffled, right. just like I don't, I got nothing. I don't but know. The what that one, is. But those, <laughs> but those records that are just absolute grand slam, out of the park, immediate, yep. blends of the blends of you know both both creative and entertaining, uh, you know, knowing no, uh, you know, a certain knowingness versus a certain primal. You know, uninhibited, uninhibited, inhibi- uh, inhibition, whatever. Uh, anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Lack, lack of inhibition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you need, it. you need the sweet and the sour and the wild and the control. You know, that those records are just mind blowing. It's like alchemy. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and like, it can be just, done. You know, <laughs> let's just toss these, you know, these less precious materials in a, you know, in a cauldron and see what comes out the other side oh snap it's it's gold gold. yeah (laughs) crazy oh wow okay (laughs) so like i want to write one of those that's sure that's that's like that's the ideal to me that sounds good (laughs) yeah whatever you gotta whatever you have to do (laughs) to to achieve that that, whatever you get your you know however you get yourself in shape however you you know frequently see music or you know try to keep up with things but you know i don't i don't know what you know what the blend is but Every once in a while, one of those records just we get a gift, you know. Yeah, and it just everything comes together. It's the it's the it's maybe it's the band for the moment. It's the album for the moment. Like who knows? Right. And uh, it just it connects on that deeper and more intrinsic level. And I, you know, I think people have made themselves insane trying to figure that out. So right. all you can do is is do the best you can to like ride that line of like challenging the audience and giving them the, yeah, just, some of the stuff that they're there just that they're there for. You know, right. You get in it for the long haul. Like music, it, it's it's nice to. It's been nice for me to because I consider that we grow at a very steady, but maybe less than reasonable pace. Like that's <laughs> fine, that's fine for me. You know, like right. I just want to. You know, I don't want to keep. I don't want to keep growing, and I don't want to. You know, at the same time, you don't want to lose what's intrinsically you about what. Uh, you know, where how, however you got there. And it's, you know, I think that's sort of the, you know, the duty of the musician is, and the artist is to figure out what that is, you know? Uh, and like, like found it, that really impacted me for this record and our last record was Low. And- Oh, sure. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, already sampled. I yeah. just, I just think like, what a tremendous career. Yeah. You know, what a tremendous musical 
growth and development and ultimately to have at least, you know to sort to have exploded at that level of sophistication and like gorgeous beauty like oh my god that's that to me is is like you know sort of the ideal of that uh, just to you know you just keep yeah because what you, you keep yourself intact you keep your ethics keep your sound you know yeah you keep know your north yourself. star yeah know know yourself trust your instincts just do your thing like come hell or high water you you, you can eventually get there if you put in the, the work well, and that's that's such a wild example too, because I mean, if you if you stop and think about it, like first song on the first record, it's, it may as well have been a mission statement, uh, <laughs> you, you, and it's like so wonderful, like wow, what is this? But then they like flip the script at least four times. That, that I can it's think crazy. of off the top of my head, where it's like, crazy. what are what is this? This is crazy, yeah. like, uh, and and they pulled it off, and it sounded like them. And anybody that yeah, wanted to come along sounds- for the ride would be in for a great ride, you know? Yeah, it is. And it is. It's a, it's, it's super, it's a super rewarding, you know, that's a super rewarding musical challenge and yeah. lesson. And it's because it's, it's hyper musical always, uh, as strange and abstract as it gets. There, there's, it's a mu- there's a music to it. Some, some people, <laughs> some people have said that those that are, uh, maybe in the heavy music world tend to, um, encounter some uh, puritanical beliefs as to what yeah. can and cannot be done by a, by a heavy band. Uh, I'm not sure right. if you've heard of this, John, but <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's, and I think it's, I think it's a funny, you know, it's a fun, it's funny to, it's funny to appreciate every aspect of who you are and where you've come from and, yeah. you know, and who's, who surround you and what you're, you know, what the general scenes you're adjacent to or like are up to, but, um, yeah, I think it's also very fun to play with what, what's that threshold? What is that threshold for people? Like, yeah, maybe that threshold is where we can find something new, you know. Because it, I, you know, I genuinely think while at the same while at the same time you are writing rock music or uh, creating songs that are, are n- nice experiences to behold, I think there's also you know there's dimension that's that's available and you ha- you have to seek it. Yeah, I mean, well, and, and again, that goes back to the giving the audience what they want versus what they need. You know, that that kind of yeah. where, where where's the line for that? And uh, but then I also well, think I, about like Metalocalypse is like a hilarious cartoon, right? <laughs> and when the one brother like talks about like someone put, puts on acoustic and he talk, calls it a grandpa's guitars, sure, like sure. I mean, I mean, that's deeply hilarious. On a no- first of all, it's just funny. Secondly, it's like yeah, because that's like how it's perceived by like people that are never. Sure. Oh, it's a grandpa guitar, you know, yeah, yeah. And, which is so absurd, but uh, but it's, so, it needed to be so, speaked into the world. <laughs> yeah, so some so sometimes you, sometimes it's like when one of those conventions that when you find one of those conventions that you are breaking that you just sort of lean into it yeah you know? sure absolutely like, i've always i've always felt a strong connection to acoustic music and i've always i've actually always felt that elect electric music was just like my way of like hiding the f- hiding the flaws that would be apparent if i stripped it down that far you know because there's no cover right. there's, or, or i should say there's there you can do it so that you have more cover electric, but it's it's right. harder to do that acoustic. So, how, some crazy so, what, so my solution to that was to just constantly record acoustic songs and and right. see if you could get you know see if you could become more and more confident with it and build up that muscle group. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. and just just be just not you know, and at the same time knowing that this isn't this isn't something that there's likely to be many other people pursuing in this precise way, you know, that we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it, there, there's some fundamental intrinsic value in that just because it's not being done. And yeah. I kind I kind of think of, I think in, in one very simplistic term of music, I just, I'm just, I should just write what I want to hear, you know, what I, what I would like someone else to have written so that I could hear it. That, yeah. Seems, that seems like a balanced way of thinking about it. It doesn't deny the self, uh, but it's, I don't know. It's just like, if there's space in the world for something new, I'd rather fill that than uh, fully let myself be absorbed by, you know, just the things that work. And I, I think just trying to like straddle that line is enough to keep us interesting and to keep, you know, to, generate new ideas as time as time goes on as as we 
you know, now hopefully as a, as a stable four piece, like can develop these things. Cause it ta- that takes work in, in itself. It's cause it's a, cause, cause we give and take with that as well. Right. And, yeah. and, and not everybody is always going to hundred percent get every idea or even agree with every idea. Right. And, and then you have to decide what you can do with that. Cause that is the, that's the band part of being in demand. So yeah, and I think writing. that's the part that's that's been really that's been really beautiful for for in, in my opinion, uh, more recently is that the you know the, the contribution of everybody just feels more equivalent, and it feels like everybody just under it feels like we have become like a band in a very genuine and you know just like <laughs> sort of like right you know, right sort of yeah a genuine sense like it, it's it's like oh we've we've finally you know, walked over that, you know, walked through that transom where we don't need to discuss the verbal ideas that we're going through. We just need to play and show each other. Yeah. You, you've crossed the Rubicon of, of being, you know, that, that <laughs> becoming more than the sum of its parts Yeah, and, and it, having it feels, an operational it, entity. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like that. And I, I, I don't think it's, I, I, you know, I think that's a really, it's a really, it's been a really wonderful thing for me. And so I feel like it's worth it's there's some value in talking, you know, and sort of admitting that that's probably a huge part of the way that this record sounds is that we've, we've found that, uh, as strange as it seems, I just haven't, you know, in yeah. 20 years, I haven't, I haven't really gone through that once until now. Right. <laughs> so for me, it's awesome. So for me, I'm just, you know, I feel, it feels good. Yeah. And so, uh, so tell me about well tell me all right so tell me about stone tell me about how, like how, how it came to pass because obviously there was uh you know there's a lot going lot going on in the world even before yeah, the sure. tour i'm not sure if you're aware of this but uh for sure, for sure. <laughs> thing or two thing or two uh well, yeah i mean how many songs did, did you put together for it originally like how it was is what you hear way, out there basically what you get was there kind of a culling process what there was there yeah there was a massive but but pretty i what i feel like was a very efficient calling process where we uh you know at the at the beginning of the lockdown and everything that's when we that's when we began writing this and so everybody's everybody's isolated everybody's separate and everybody for some reason like has this like tremendous like songwriting power so everybody's constantly generating new things we're trading files and it's 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 cool in its own in, in in a sense that yes we're sitting here today talking about what that process you know amounted to but the it wasn't fun it wasn't like a fun natural way of doing things so we go okay well this we can't move beyond all of this stuff all i think if i cataloged everything correctly 37 different wow okay yeah that's bits and pieces some some of those were some of those were songs that are 90 percent the way that they were intended and some of them are bits and pieces that got you know it's like the visible man right some of them has musculature some of them is basically just a skeleton <laughs> sure sure another, another another good uh no. uh yeah and so we thought uh this that, that that meant it was the prime time for us to finally take that what i think is you know a, a a huge leap for us in terms of uh, in independence and sort of freedoms that we produced this record ourselves. We recorded the record ourselves. Uh, we took it um, after at the, at the end of the, you know, majority of the production and recording, we took it to Joe Barisi in, in Los Angeles and then Bob Ludwig, uh, master, never mind. Uh, no big deal. Have you, have you heard yeah, of no Paul? Deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah master, right? like, so, so, so at the very end of the chain there, we did have two very, very critical pieces of the, of, of the puzzle assembled, but yeah. for two over just, for just over two years that this record existed, there were quite literally four people who even were around to plug things in or yeah are you like sending files back and forth like what's what's the process yeah, so, so okay. the it was a file sharing thing and then yeah. we built we, we rented an airbnb studio in the middle of nowhere you know just sort of equidistant from new york and right. uh, philadelphia and it was a bit you know it was a gigantic place that we knew had very desirable very ambient acoustic properties and the idea was to go out there with pieces and no one had n- no one knew how to perform we, but we knew you know we yeah knew the music and then to sit down as a team and just 12 14 hours a day jam rehearse jam rehearse yeah find form and so fairly fairly quickly we 
I think we cut it down to like 16, 14. And I think in the end it was, there were 12 tracks that we recorded for this record, 10 of which we finished. Made into the record. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, that, that process happened pretty quickly. It was mostly days and days of, you know, hold up and in the middle of nowhere in the winter uh, right. and just, you know, jamming music. It was like kind of an ideal yeah, no distraction, Place. right? Yeah, it was great. It was, yeah. it was really cool. I mean, that's there's something to be said for being forced to focus on the the, the work that you're doing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then we, had, you know, then we we had this, you know, because because we're just in charge of everything, and there's no, you know, no one else is on the clock for us, so it's all you know, sort of our our labor, our speculative work. Uh, we would sort of work the work the songs into, you know suitable form and then and then refine the composition till the arrangement was 90 percent there right. and then we would start tracking it so the idea being that we were in a situation finally where we could sort of put to the test this idea of immediacy and spontaneity yeah you know we're we're you know potentially in a in a, a different budgeted you know bigger more costly uh production facility you would not dick around with something that no, could, potentially, no. could potentially just not yield anything. You know, be a lot, maybe a whole lot of work for. No, for you wouldn't no. want to waste your time because you might be into you know chasing fool's gold, right? You know, right. So you end up doing more. You do end up doing more work trying to cre create a, a greater level of precision and articulation, but you lose something along the way. You know what I mean? It's, right. It's like the exact opposite of cassette tapes. Every time you play <laughs> sure. it, yeah. it gets cleaner and sharper. And slicker and yeah. less soulful, you know. L less so, having any 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 you know raggedy meat on the bone, so to speak. Right, <laughs> right. So we, I think what what we were what was really interesting about this was we were try we were at all times trying to capture just that whatever that like razor's edge of it. Like, yeah, I know the song, but like. Right. Oh, here's that Phil. Yeah, or, I think this is what's coming up. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, there's i mean like i think half the songs on the record end in free form yeah yeah and the track you know the i think it's the fourth track on the record choir is and it is is an improvisation that it was just a, a an idea with a tempo and a key and no rules and no one really told Let's each other what was gonna happen yeah it was yeah. just really cool you know <laughs> well you get a breeze in this that way you get sort of like a uh, it's gonna feel way different than like, do you know what I mean? Like some records, it's like, sounds like they were trying to make an important record. And it's like, well, I can tell you right, they're trying sure. to make an important record because it's, yeah. it's, it's very like uptight in a way, yes. you know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Doesn't mean it's bad. Doesn't mean it's uptight. Yeah. And, it, and then there are records that sound like, they're like, yeah, let's play some songs. Cool. Plug in, go. And it's the first sure. thing you hear is what it seems like, even if that's not true. Right. And, and you know, and I, I should, you know, pause to say that. I'm never, ever, ever going to be interested at all in capturing on a studio recording the live feel. You know, just stripped, two guitars. No, no, no. The studio is where you can make magic. No, no, no. Studio is different than live. Yeah. Studio is different. Yeah. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe like, maybe super, super, super real or or yeah. ultra real or hyper real or something. Right. You know, would be would be better. Like, I want that fantasy to feel like majestic but yeah. grounded you know so so in order to say order, they want a live feel but it's like yeah but do you really want yeah. a live feel do you want like guitars so, going out of tune like what do you what do you mean when you right. say that <laughs> so we so we sort of took the we sort of took the time to make those tests yeah, yeah and some of them were horrible but some of them were some of them to us were sort of magical because uh we we felt like we had it wasn't this just we hey we want to jam we want to do this it was that we spent years on stage right refining the idea because my guys are all really conceptual you know like, sure. it was like, yeah but what does this say you know right so what where i whereas i i just want i want a reason that we can improvise and i want a reason that there can be something spontaneous about a set that's going to contain so much rehearsed stuff so it started creeping more and more into the you know the interstitials and we started learning how to like then yeah. move the songs at a slightly different pace so we could make them longer and insert things. And uh, I, I think that 
when we're when, then when we're in the studio, we wanted to apply that because it's really fun. Yeah. And we what I say is we earned it. We earned it because we, you know, I think primarily Gina and I learned how to make sure that improvisations don't include solos. Because that's not <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. that's, okay. That's yeah. what I think that's what I think for, for us it would be really it would be really incorrect to make it like a, a you know, like a, a display of anything other than just like cool communicating, you know, cool restraint communicating. With yeah, them. harmony that's, of melody, awesome. right? Totally. Like it's it's like that. Just let it let let the yeah. let let the pulse of the you know of the studio tell you what to do. You know, just and no it, one's pulling a Steve happen. Vai or something on here. Peace and love. You know, right, <laughs> and that's and you know because it would instantly it would instantly go and you know it would instantly get horrible. Yeah. So I, I feel that's why I say I feel like we earned it, and it was you know it was a lot about just enjoying a groove. Uh, and then finding some music inside that that improvisation, I think. That sure, was, that sure. Was, that was a cool thing to have achieved because uh, well, it ain't easy. It, it's interesting that yeah, I mean, recording and and sort of like almost pre mixing it, right? Uh, like as as you go too. That's such a a. Um, it, it's again as mentioned, you get to capture it before it gets stale for sure. Yeah, but. Uh, it's a very modern way of working also. Sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that, and I think that's cool. It's like, okay, there's, there's a cool modern way of working. Yeah. That doesn't feel like totally stale to me. yet. Right. It doesn't feel like you're putting on TikTok, but it, by the same token, right. it's like, <laughs> it's not like you're doing a steely Dan either. You know, it's no, like, no, no. <laughs> and and uh, there's something to be said for that. And I guess, you know, you, you've, you know, you worked with so many great, engineers and producers like him yeah john congledon I, I just had jason from a uh, train dodge on a few weeks ago and we oh, were both cool. extolling the praises of just like what a warped genius what? that guy is Dude, you know like, he, had, he and Jesus. Friedman are just beyond they're beyond they're beyond creative and they have beyond. their own like pocket universe I, i'm firmly convinced sure. of this <laughs> they, uh, jason, but like you know like their realities vibrate very close to one another uh which is yes. which is cool because I, I still feel like I don't deserve to have worked with either of them. You know, I still feel like I'm. I still I still feel I have like imposter's guilt. That like I fucking bullshit my way into this thing. I just said right. their names so many times. You know, it, it's 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 like it's amazing to me. Like you think you think deeply about sound, but then you meet someone that's like, no, this is like your the freaking mind palace yeah. of sound. Over and, then, here. and then and then because <laughs> you know because we're competitive, we go well. I guess that's now our goal. And right. Our, <laughs> that's what we, we're going to do that now. Yeah. Yeah. We're going yeah, to do that now. No, no, but you can't, it, it, it rubs off on you, you know? Sure. Uh, well, and, 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 and there's something like, to be said for the attempt too. Even, even if you right. don't succeed with what is your, your uh, attempt to accomplish, the attempt of doing it can produce unlikely results at the same time as well. That's, so. but that's the whole thing to, yeah. to me. To, like, you know, cause I, I feel like I'm just, a, I feel like, you know, the, sometimes the point of making music is just to make it, you know, it's like, right. It's, right. The performance is like, so I hear anyway. Yeah, the performance, <laughs> but like the you know the performance is something I think that it, it, it's just you're harnessing a, a, a different type of energy. It's a, it's a different experience. It's it's like a little easier to convince. It's a little easier to sell, but you have to you know to really transcend. You have to you have to have to absolutely like commit yourself to the like ideal of performing that's yeah, a yeah. weird thing that's a weird thing it is know? a weird thing yeah you know to have been in like a basement band and a vfw and a, you know else lodge band for, for so long it's like dirt floors and yep you know cross pumps like that's uh, i don't know it, it's and what gets over there versus what gets over in like an arena full of people that are like yeah it's amazing but, but, but <laughs> like <know? laughs> But the thing is, like the audience dynamics can are similar in yeah. at, at roughly similar like size groups, like a hundred people, two hundred people, three hundred people. That's a really uh, anticipatable audience, you know. You get in the thousands, it becomes a different thing. When you're speaking to somebody in the back of the room, but when you get into like arenas and stadiums, which I can't, I still can't believe that I can say I've done as many times as I have, uh, <laughs> which always feels weird. But like you're talking to a distant pinpoint of light someone in the next I, city over is what yeah, it feels and, like and, i'm and, sure yeah. and you know let's face it at this at this stage like if you're seeing baroness in a stadium like we are there to earn your yeah 
you know, attention. Like you're, we're not there. We're not your, we're not your headliner, you know? So, so, you know, I think it's there each, each stage size is its own crucible. Well, you know, well, well you sure. <laughs> the thing I'm often, I'm often fond of saying is like, just keep in mind, we're in the way of somebody's favorite band. Like, like they they want to see yeah, that yeah. band and we're in the way. Yeah. So we need to present why yeah. we're there and show them what time it is. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's like, it's like, you know, being the warm up comedian for like a talk show or something. Like, sure. Yeah. They're like, we just okay. want to get to the show. We don't care about what you're I'm, doing. I know what I'm here for. So, yeah. so for me, for me, that's the challenge. Okay. Now that yeah. is a weird, that is a weird thing to undertake and to try to overcome and see, you know, okay, what, if I enter this crucible, what am I like when I get on there? You know, am I right. harder? Right. Am I sharper? Am I more jag? You know, it's kind of an interesting, uh, you know, it's a, I think playing to different sized crowds in different sized and different or different room orientations, I think it is an awesome experience. It is yeah. completely the reason I play music is to to try them all. You know, the the Red Rocks, which which I've never played, but I've seen a couple shows. I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. Or there's like the Gorge in, uh, in, in Washington State, yeah. or we played this like uh, you know, 2,500 year old Coliseum. And France, all the, all the cavern off. venues where it's like, wow, yeah, you're like, in a cavern. Okay, cool. Dude, you know, the, weirder, right. the, the weirder the better, because I've played on a bunch of muddy ass stages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I've done, back. right? Totally. <laughs> and I've played sweaty basements and plenty. Yep. I'll still do that. That's still fun. You know? Well, and a basement can seem like a stadium at the right show, you know? And, yeah, I mean, and a stadium something. can feel like a basement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> People who exclusively go to like house shows, yeah, that's their world. Like their it world. doesn't get better than that when you go into a bigger venue. So, I think, I think you have to sort of learn to enjoy music in different. You have to understand that at these different size breakpoints, the crowd thing is a different. It means it, a different thing. It's a different dynamic. Yeah, it's it's, kind it's of a, different. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a different machine and. Uh, I, I love that I've had the opportunity to tour for so many years and try to understand those machines because I'm very into the like the crowd energy dynamics. It's it's really yeah. mystifying to me. Yeah, because like a like like a like a suite of songs that are sitting together that would like slay at like a small club and then like it just doesn't right. get over for some reason. On, on arena. But right. then like one that you're like, yeah, this one is like a fart in a room in a, in a small show, but like a room and then outside, oh my God, like, it's great. Yeah, dude, sounds like a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is amazing. So, so that's so I, that makes me curious again about the the Urbanus touring and and pulling stuff out that was, uh, you know, maybe not really thought of in that capacity or like you weren't at the same level as a band when it was written does that change your idea of like some of those songs and kind of like bring them into a new light because there's always there's yeah, pleasant I, surprises and then there's like not so pleasant surprises no too. i think i think <laughs> i think by and large did you have a good handle on we, it yeah a good, a good handle on it but also like surprisingly there's no difficulty difference in our old music to our as, yeah. as to our new music it's all hard it turns out you know it's all <laughs> difficult music to play right. uh, i don't i have no idea why we write music as you know with as much complexity as we do but it's uh it's how it's how we do things so, it's not going to yeah, be boring that's for sure no no know? no so it's it's cool it's a, it's like a cool <laughs> challenge because sometimes you get all the right parts yeah but you don't have the right swagger with it and, right. Yeah. And like, and then we realized that. And I think at first when we were one or two songs where we didn't have the right swagger, and we we're all like, ah, "It's not worth it." But yeah. because of this tour, we had to get back to them. You got to better find it. Yeah. Unlock, <laughs> unlock the you know the the chest in the in the center because we we really we had to get to it. And yeah, I, I think every time we do that, we learn a little bit more. I think it's yeah, it's it's been it's been a cool. It was a really cool experience and experiment. Uh, and. You know, thankfully, I think we made we designed that tour specifically enough that it was only people who were willing and and who would have wanted to be in a room with us for three hours. Right, because that's not going to be everyone that even listens to the band. Right, there's like some people that are like they want to hear the hits or you know yeah, whatever they constitutes the hits. the, the hits. One hundred percent. And you know, honestly, at that show, you're definitely going to hear the hits. <laughs> Sure, you're gonna, but you're also yeah. going to hear like gonna there's hear like them. the acoustic section. There's like the yeah. weird noise jam. You know, there's like and, and you're going to hear some like oh that one, huh? Whoa, crazy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it was you know it was a, it was cool for us because because we had to keep some fluidity in the set. I'm just yeah again balancing out all, you know across all the, the you know color themed records. Uh, 
it made the show, you know, like a, a pretty, it was a pretty wild experience to put together, but yeah, it, I mean, it's... It, it made us, it made us string all of our music together in an interesting way. And to, to realize that there's not, it, it's pretty, con there's not like bad, there's not that many bad combinations. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah, can, sure. Totally. We yeah. can put two wildly different era songs together and they fit perfectly. Yeah, because uh, even though you think of them as being like, you know, different languages coming from different planets, like it's not right. Turns out it's not that different. <laughs> yeah. So that was I, I think it's I think it's good. I mean it's all maybe it's also like a sign of like how far we haven't grown. Yeah. Uh, that it that it that it takes on such a familiar cast. No, but it but it was <laughs> it's, it's, it's it was it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So yeah, and there's the only other thing. It's just it's such a monumental way to kind of get back in the game too of doing it too. Like, and the only thing I can think of like effort wise that, that like is somewhat similar. To Sparks they did this this thing in the UK. Are you familiar with this? Where they did like twenty nights and they played like one of their records in its entirety every night. Yeah. Even like the bad ones that nobody likes, which huh. which that's for me is the Sparks part of it. I'm like, oh yeah, even this yeah, one yeah. that like. Yeah. Nobody liked this then. They still don't like it now, but we're doing it top to bottom. <laughs> yeah. I, I, like, I was like, wow, that's amazing. That just says to me that you're, you know, you stand by what you've done. You stand by what you've done. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And it's. And you, I think you got to. You know, I, I remember I was at Lollapalooza two or three years ago uh, when Metallica headlined. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, backstage and I, I heard from my manager that they were going to be doing uh, St. Anger tune. And I was like, oh, sick, which one? He's like, uh, Dirty Window or something. Like, yeah. I, I have no, I, that's not like, it's definitely not the three or four that I'm, that I'm Yeah, because you think about that with. record, the first thing everyone thinks about is the snare sound. Yeah. <laughs> Myself inclusive. Uh, right. And, but then it's like, what's on that record? <laughs> you know, there's there's like the right. two songs that everybody is like, oh yeah, those I, ones, but. You know what, they, they they got out they, they were on stage and they they self-effaced a little bit before they're like yeah we know you know james was like i know you don't want to hear this song i know you, you know yeah. I, I know this record's like controversial but like i wrote this song man. i yeah, want to play I stand, it i stand by it <laughs> right exactly I stand by it. like exactly yeah you know, what are you, what, i'm just gonna waste four minutes of your time if you don't want to hear it but like get on with yourself like yeah yeah we wrote this record we're playing it you know and i i love that you know that's that's the way yeah. you, we'll play for whom the bell tolls to after it. Don't worry, you yeah. know, like it'll but be, it's a, it'll be it's fine. A yeah, it's the balance of <laughs> sure. you know sure. what they you know what they consider art when they consider entertainment. They, they, you know, I think great acts, Aerosmith, you know, probably yeah. understands like the, combination the part, what, out, out well, of the gate. I'm like, what really? Well, you know, Amazing. they they you know they were known in their heyday as you know a competent blues. A hammer, you know. But, yeah, exactly, uh, ex exactly. A ripper band of that style that was so mercilessly right. mocked for good reason, not the least yeah. of which is they be they became their own parody band later. Totally, <laughs> you know. But, <laughs> you know, there, there's, there's. But it was that. good if you listen to those early <laughs> records. It's like, God, this is great, and it's like. It, it has such it's so far afield from that other stuff, including even the '90s hits. That it's like, oh yeah, this is the same band. I forgot. But the, you know, like maybe they forgot for a while. I don't know. The, you know? the '90s hits were were schlock. I mean, complete yeah. complete garbage. But oh, yeah. they're not they're not not hits. Yeah, you know what they they're, are? Huge hits. Exactly. Huge hits. <laughs> huge, like, huge hits. Yes. Yeah. Like all '90s music that I hated at the time. Yeah. Oh sure. Yeah. I, I, I'd gladly, I'd gladly have a little bit more of that now, uh, you know, in terms of like songwriting. Sure. Like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, like bring, bring, you know, gin, gin blossoms. They were, they were that, pretty good. You know, it, it, hits. like I was mad at them at the time, but it's like that would be like, oh my god, these guys are great now. You know, like yeah. I. I, I <laughs> <laughs> I, and I firmly give it, like, you know, like that Soundgarden record, you know, I skip Black Hole Sun and uh, Spoon Man, but it's, don't worry, it's still like two hours long and it's amazing. It's got like 4th yeah. of July on there. It's like, this is, oh, yeah. they, they were trying no, weird shit, you know? Yeah, they're really, yeah. And they were also, they were also trying to write massive, massive hits. hits. <laughs> and, and it's you know amazing. what? It's amazing. They yeah. did. And like, they, and it was still heavy as hell and it's kind of weird. And like, Black Hole Suns, it just like, Oh, and 
I mean, it's What's it's still a well written song. Oh, uh, fell on black days. Yeah. Fell on black days. Yeah. That's one of the best rock songs. It's of all time. it's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And it's like, there's it's not really like good. any part of it that doesn't work. And it's like, I remember at the time just being mad because I was hearing it too much. It was like, all right, you know. But Yeah, that was it. But that was it. I still was like. <laughs> only, they're still good. Like, I mean, <laughs> I, like, that's that's like, you know, those are my, during my formative years of like playing guitar. And yeah. they had this quality to them that all of, all of uh, Nirvana had. Uh, yeah. Nirvana, oh, yeah. Nirvana totally. just like, let me just get this out of the way. That's why I play music. It's, yeah. I know, yeah. I know every. You're in a safe spot, my dude. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's how, it's, it was my, my Bible, my entry point. You know? uh, but I, I found of Kurt's riffs and I found of certain Soundgarden riffs that they have the human, they sort of have a human er- ergonometry to them where right. the riff is there and it's easy to play if you're a kid. Yeah, yeah. But it's so it's such a sophisticatedly beautiful riff, presentation of a riff that just comes from these like little micro subdivisions that makes it cool and and yet at 14 years old I can play it. Right, right. But like it's the nuanced simplicity of it and like how yeah. it all sits together and like and the knowledge of maybe what was left out even, you know? Like Yeah, well that's but that, that that's all genius. all of those all of that songwriting is. Yeah. It's like a strum with certain accented yeah. pitches and chords left out. And it's like, that's, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. That's the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. You know, it's like, you know, I only had the, had the lockdown on the, like the downstroke thing. Sure. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da, da. And, and there was something kind of human to that, but the, you know, the sort of strum swag that Paige had, or, you know, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Guns N' Roses and stuff like, but, but, Nirvana and Soundgarden had that too. This is songwriting, you know, like guitar driven songwriting. Which you come um, to appreciate more later. And maybe oh you know, if you're God. 15, maybe you're going to have less less articulation of why that is so great. Yeah, but it's like, like, you're it like it's, yeah, it speaks, it speaks to me. <laughs> it speaks and I'm a kid, you, yeah. you know? Yeah, well, it speaks to you and opens up a world of possibilities. Like, like for me, oh, that, yeah. that opened up, you know, uh, you know, Nirvana begat. Melvins and Butthole Surfers and Sonic Youth and, you know, Helmet and Jesus Lizard and so on and so on and so on. But, like, without someone to, like, open that door and kind of show those possibilities, which, you know, there is merit for that. Right. Then how would you know? Now, I mean, nowadays I think it's, it's a lot easier just because everything's, like, uh, instantly available. But there's something yeah, to be look, said look, for look, it. Look what they do with it, man. It's it's like that polyphia or any of that <laughs> Stuff. I'm like, what? Yeah, this is I like, know. this is guitar music now. And I it's, just, I, I, it's astounding. And I don't mean a, that as a it, compliment. It a, I, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it is both. I mean, it is both. It's astounding that you can do that. Truly. It's a, truly it is astounding that you can do that. Yes. It's a, tr- it's a true gift to be able to, to do that, but does not match my personal sensibilities. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't feel super musical to me. It doesn't feel, and, and, and also there is something to say that, like, you know, every generation should have their music that pisses off the previous generation too. Okay, sure, yeah. but this but that usually <laughs> that usually comes with like a backbeat, you know? Yeah, yeah. Usually it's it more usually comes with like listenable, a little, but and like sexy. Yeah, sexy, exactly. You know? but that's the other thing. It's so stilted. Where it's like, what? Yeah, it's, yeah. Why is this so like? I don't know. Like I'm, I'm, fasc- I'm fascinated. With it. I'm totally it's, fascinated. I mean, it, like, it is because. A, strange thing because yeah he this kid has a brilliant gift but it's yeah uh, it's it's like a it's like a technical gift it's like he's like yeah. carving sculptures out of ice <laughs> right well, no, it, it yeah. is there's something very icy about it sure or, absolutely. or crystals or something yeah yeah it's, like, yeah. it's quite oh. it's quite wild it's quite modern it's quite forward but if if that exists then i then i also sort of in like the most desperate way once wish for something like three doors down to be you know (laughs) well all right so so if i can turn it around to you know turn to friends of the show's an actual friend chat pile who you're going to be playing with so oh of course like uh who are fantastic and have connected and resonated with kids in a way that you rarely see with me idols maybe that's about the only thing i can think of right yeah and uh you know I, i of course think they're the bee's knees i have since i played with them on their third show or whatever but like but like there's a lot of bands that are that are great or doing something interesting and like you know nothing 
really comes of it, or maybe they're able to build something sustainable for, for, for whatever reason. Those guys, and they're as surprised by as anyone, right? Have connected yeah. on this deeper yeah. level of people that are, and they're being a gateway band for like these kids right. to like get into other weird music, which is great. Like, how long can be mad at that? Like, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, I'm not mad. This, I think this is the most exciting year of music for me in a very, very long time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's alarming. Well, it's, I think it's awesome, but it's, it's strike. What's striking to me is that it's, it's all from like a, you know, sort of a punk or hardcore or like a metal place. Like that's yeah. where the most yeah. interesting yeah. stuff is right now. And it's, it's so generationally different from me, but it's so exciting that I, I, I'm just like hugely a fan of what's happening. Right sure. Now. No, I agree. Yeah. And, it's, uh, it, I find it, I find it in, incredibly inspiring uh that there's so many bands in those subgenres or in those you know so heretofore underground pockets of, of music with they're playing at such a high level and creating at such a you know in, in with such like a florid beautiful results i'm it's it's breathtaking to me you know i, I love it well like, that's that's the way to look at it you know yeah, it's like shades of 80s street punk Sure. Shades of psychedelia. Yeah. Shades of like legit sick southern like garage rock. Like, wow, this is great. why not? Let's go. You know? <laughs> like a, a new version, a new version of post punk that like hits me a little harder than the old version. Sure. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's 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 exciting if you let yourself engage with it again on its own terms. For sure. Yeah. And Rather I, than and coming just, at it like, no, these are the incorrect influences to have, or yeah, these are. I like, come on. I'm like, yeah, yeah. y'all. Should you know? I think our audience at least should know me better than you know, think that like I care about. Yeah, yeah. I, to be clear, I'm oh, not talking about you. I'm just talking about no, 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 no. loud mouth. No, no, I'm just internet. saying. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, God. Who cares? Like, yeah. Beg, borrow, steal. Yeah. By hook or by crook. I don't care how you do it. Impress me with good music. Let's yeah. like make something like be better. Like write a better song. Do the, a better, cooler thing. This this make steel thing. More glorious. Yeah. The steel thing, I, I heard someone say, well, they weren't using it anymore. And I thought that was the best answer. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it was, but oh, it was a band that is does not, they were in fact not using it anymore. So that was, uh, <laughs> it, was it was a good diss. Yeah, and there you go. Uh, so let's do a thing here. Um, let, let's briefly, just, just while I got you, uh, if, if you don't mind, let's go over each of the each of the records, if you can just give a few thoughts on each one, and then we'll for Stone. Well, we'll our yeah, and then we can go through Stone kind of song by song if you're into it, because I think since sure. it just came out, like people kind of appreciate that. But uh, so we got the EPs, of course, before that. But th just tell me about tell me about the Red album, uh, which is you know somewhat ancient history at this point, back in like the Halcyon days of uh, what uh, the Obama era. <laughs> right? Yeah, but I think <laughs> or actually, I... was it Bush even? Jesus, no, uh, 2007, was... right? 2007 it came out so we would we would have written it through 2006 and uh, i think that was we needed this we wanted a mission statement yeah and we wanted a record that had as much variety as we could possibly get it sure. you know because we had a lot of influences on we had a lot of influences running through us that we were trying desperately in those you know sort of seminal years of the band to to use uh, and to to reference, like no, maybe somewhat knowingly sometimes. I, I don't I don't really even know. Yeah. But the 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 thing we wanted to do was we just wanted to take everything we thought was cool and see if we could put it through the context of heavy. You know, sure. that wasn't yeah. a very that wasn't a worn out idea at that point. <laughs> <laughs> or, or so I felt, you know. Right, right. No, yeah, it was very, uh, this very is, much that This idea. is like, <laughs> this is like, you know, this is like the year after ISIS and yeah, uh, and some of the, you know, one of the more notable Neurosis records coming out. Uh, so there was, there was, you know, and, and Kaven uh, was. Probably not happen. No, Caven was happening, and Converge was happening. That and, first you know, was Torch record was out, but not Torch Meanderthal, record. which Meanderthal was the one that kind of made no. It but, the, more, but the but the EP and the EP, municipal, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. municipal waste right. was municipal just waste. a young right. band. Yeah, yeah. And our early our early thing, we, like we toured almost. I mean, well, we toured with Municipal Waste. We toured with Torch. Yeah. And Torch toured with Municipal Waste, and like yeah. it was a pretty, you know, it was a pretty tight knit little group of you know southern 
southern bands and there was you know of course Kailasa and then Black mm-hmm. Tusk and Circle Takes a Square and like you know a handful of these other bands and uh, you know I think we I think the template that that, that was set for us uh, primarily through uh, you, you know our local you know one of the other local bands with Kailasa was that that you could be interesting and musical right and extremely heavy and extremely psychedelic and all of that and not sound was, like each other even not necessarily right. right yeah yeah precisely and you know we we had uh you know we had done quite a quite a bit with those eps we we lived off them for ages so i think when that's that record uh i had a i had like a a, a broad concept that i used just to just so that each song would have its own direction because uh, unfortunately at that point i hadn't like suffered as much in my life so i was just looking for you know songs to write about yeah uh, and so i took like reference points from the non primarily from the non-musical world i took uh you know an etched victorian uh, victorian etching uh that i really liked yeah i took uh liquid swords record oh took, sure well yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah i took a book uh called The Growth of the Soil by Knut Hamsen, the Norwegian writer. I just took like these really, the things that I was interested in at the time that were like sort of, seemed sort of obscure and sort of like they, they would have some potential like lyrical fodder start, yeah. starting points for me. Yeah. Just because I wanted to come, I wanted Baroness to come out swinging like, hey, like our statement needed to be, we're, we're just going to do whatever the fuck we want. But This is serious business, but we're coming this out. Is, this is a, serious yeah, and, and, you know, I think there was just, like, an emphasis on, like, really focusing on art. And and, right. and at the same time, the record was supposed to be, like, super heavy. So, I, you know, I think it was, it was it, it, we, we learned a bunch of different things on that record. I learned how to do a bunch of things that I never knew I could do prior to that. And we just took that and catapulted into Blue Record, uh, which I can just string them all together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you do my work for me here. And so, so <laughs> our guitar, the guitar player on Red, uh, Brian, who was Brian Bluey, Alan, her brother, uh, had left the band. And we had, uh, you know, my one of my best friends from growing up, Pete Adams, uh, who, you know, was from the same town that we were all from. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, and, and who was stationed in, in, uh, just outside of savannah like tim our first guitar player was it was just like a bunch of guys from virginia who were inexplicably in savannah georgia and uh pete joined the band and, and he and i were were really into like prog prog rock <laughs> and like set like nerdy 70s like gentle giant and stuff or Gent, like exactly gentle giant oh, the, gra- awesome. the groundhogs if you want something oh i love groundhogs. something a little yeah. edgier you know yeah um but like the kookier the better and 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 you know like like and nerdy like camel and oh man. All, all all the <laughs> yeah, you ain't yeah, kidding like, no 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 like really like really into camel at that point right right um, and and a lot you know and a lot of that sort of like english pastoral psychotic prog or like magma mag uh, yeah magma is actually Magma holds up. Cool. Yeah. I booked Magma at a festival a few years ago. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, Incredible. Anyway, so like we had, we had just like, we had really wild tastes in like prog, like nerdy old fashioned prog. And so I think we were taking stuff from that like pretty liberally. Right. uh, And just, you know, just trying to make a, a very unique record that built very definitely on the back of red. Yeah, but didn't have that sort of like, didn't have as much of that like preloaded southern feel. But we were trying to, I think, find like a heavy southern music that had elements of all the stuff that we really liked. So there's you know there's acoustic ballads and there's crazy time signatures and there's and and you know I was I've become obsessed with. Uh, because at, at that point I was like listening to uh, Coggleton's records and I was listening to Fridman's records yeah. for the ideas and the sounds on them. I mean, I'll say this, like the first time I was ever asked if, what producer I wanted to work with, I said, well, I've got three ideas. I've got Joe Barisi, I've got Dave Fridman, I've got John Collins. Those are the three guys I want to work with. 
And here I am, 15 years later, I work with all three of them. Check, check, check. <laughs> not exactly, not exactly by accident, but right, you know, sure, they, sure. All three right. of them felt okay working with me. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You did, must um, be doing something okay. Yeah. So I think I think you know, and I think I was very I, when we did Blue, I was like very, very into William Faulkner. Um, oh, okay. Very, very, very deeply into like Southern Gothic. Yeah, yeah. And Cormac McCarthy. Yeah, yeah. So we have a song, you know, like like sort of our like classic front of the set song is a, it's called a, a horse called Golgotha, which yep. is a line I took from Sutri by Cormac McCarthy. Um, so I, I think for me at that point, and, and I was reading her, uh, like all the works of Herman Hess. So there's a very cheery stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. And that's, you know, that's yeah. sort of, that was sort of, you know, I think that record also is the first time I, I realized that I felt most comfortable writing with some melancholy and some right, right. sadness and uh, you know, some melodic texture that, that had that bittersweet sort of feel to it. Um, so I think that, you know, that record, I really, I mean, I, I we always say, you know, Pete, Pete would always joke to me. He's like, man, we caught light, lightning in a bottle with that one because sort of had the music worked out. But once we had recorded all the basic tracks, our drummer, you know, left Dallas and where we were with Colin and then, yeah. We would write on Tuesday night what I would sing on Wednesday morning. <laughs> we would write on Wednesday night what I would sing. Like I was sure. I yeah. was like, here's everything lyrically that I've got. And I, yeah, yeah. I was up all I was up all night, up super early in the morning, just trying to get just trying to get something down. And I think I, I really I, I think I discovered that it's as long as I just let myself indulge more poetically, uh, that I, I was I, I felt more confident as a as a lyricist. So that you know, I thought it was a great record. And then with yellow and green, we needed. Well, and that really connected with people. I mean, that one I remember. That one shows up on like lists and things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's like. Well, people... we would always win these. We would always win, like Revolver, Metal Album of the Year. Yeah, yeah. Which was crazy for us because we were like nobody. We were nobody. It was a pretty high. <laughs> it was a pretty high distinction for us, and we took that. And then there was, you know, there was something with blue. There was something that, with blue. We became. A, we were like sort of grouped in with the hipster category. The two things I remember, it was that A there, I was like, A, Savannah, because I was like, oh, that's interesting, Savannah. I don't yeah. know that maybe it's from Savannah. And B, I was like, oh, these, as a huge Thin Lizzy fan, I was like, these guitar harmonies rip. That, those yes. are the two things that I initially, and like, we were, apropos. We were pretty into the, you know, pretty always into the the, the, the Lizzy way of harmonizing yeah. rather than rather than Maiden or. Which or most whatever. heavy <laughs> bands go for the Maiden style, Peace and Love. Yeah, I love that I'm, too. I'm like, but... I like, put the, put, put the soul in there, put the sex yeah, in there. And keep, remember, it's. Those are just cool R and B songs when it's the movie. That's my uh, love language. You got it. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, re I really, I really felt like that was the, the first. Uh, Red was a good statement by us. It, yeah, I got yeah. my, I got my antenna out. Like shot across the bow. <laughs> yeah, art was going to be the priority. Right. And blue was, can I take that concept and, and re refine it? And can we write something that that has substance in a in a, you know, a substance and depth in a way that I, I can't, I can't continue writing music unless I figure out what that, what that's like, you know? Right. And uh, so, you know, so I think it was important to us and it was a very different, it had a very different feel than red. So I can't, you know, at that point I was like, all right, so here's what we're going to do from here on out. We're just going to look at our former, only the former record. Yeah. Identify the thing about it that makes it most unique. It's, it's, it's prime characteristic. Identify it and ignore it. Meaning, you don't, have to forsake, okay. you don't have to, you don't have to forsake it. Right. It's it still like, exists on its own merit. It still exists, but right, like, sure. you, did, yeah, yeah. you did that well. You did it well. Yeah. Well enough. Move no on. Need to redo more, it. Yeah. There's more stuff. Yeah. But, but always like, there's more stuff to learn. We're, yeah, we're you yeah. know, we're trying to radiate outwards and that means we've got to have a lot of room to like grab stuff. But I like that you're only going back to the record before for that. Right. Like it doesn't have to be like that, that you're five obstructioning everything, you know, like no. it's, 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 and, Think think about it because at the rate we re the rate we've released records, if you go two records into the past, we were it was a different age. It was like a different generation, <laughs> different was, president, you know? different time yeah, to be alive. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. No, it's totally. definitely going to sound it's definitely going to sound different. Sure. And if I only have to ignore the prime characteristics of the former record, yeah, then our sound's not likely to shift off. It's it's not likely to dissipate. Yeah. And become formless. Uh, easily because there's always there is a through line that hits them all through all of it that yeah. might that might sort of you know wobble on its axis but it's a it's a it's a 
it's a, as true a, stru, a, a through line as you're going to get with a band's back catalog. That's what I'm trying. You know, that's what I, I, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No, I get, I, I get that definitely. Um, and th- so then, all right, so yellow and greens after that, yellow, right? yeah. So yellow and green, I came up with the preposterous idea that we intentionally <laughs> write a dub, double album. Yeah, uh, because I felt like it would be an interesting experiment to try to write com- like like b- basic compositions, really mm-hmm, basic mm-hmm. compositions. How how little of an idea can we build an entire song on? And yeah. interestingly, can we write hooks? Because it felt like with you know, because it felt like with it felt like with blue. Yeah. It was like, oh, okay. We we sort of like fucked around with the idea of like melodic. You walked right up to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. And they're there. So let's let's explore that a little bit more. And that, I think yeah. that was, you know, it was a turning point for us. I, I, I thought it was going to be the one, you know, I was also like, okay, when you have, when the, you know, the gods have gifted you with a super, super solid, well-loved first record. Yeah. And a critically acclaimed follow-up. What are you going to do? Is your third record going to be settle into comfortability and refine, refine, refine? Yeah. Or is it going to be, here's our weird side? And I was like, well, it's got to be more here's our weird side, but let's see if we can make this these un, sort of underdeveloped or unknown pockets of our songwriting. Let's see if we can like swing really hard with them and come very confidently with a, a style of writing that we are we do not feel... Uh, like we we are equipped to do you know writing a, like punching way above our belt and i think the results of that went awesome you know like i think one of my i think a couple of my favorite songs and i think certainly at this point the record that we pull most from sure yeah is the most songs that fit you know different points in the set well and that's also i think it's the only one you record as a trio right like uh yes and our and our bass player left shortly before the recording session so yeah uh, so I played bass on it. So it has it was also like a little bit of more of a punky bass feel. Totally different bass. feel. Yeah. Where whereas I really, you know, when Summer was our bass player, I really felt it was insistent that he play play with his fingers because I thought it, it was just different than what you would expect. Especially in heavy music. Yeah, know? that's what I'm saying. Like it was yeah. always about it was it was always like, well, the it'll be different, so let's try it. It seems yeah. like it'll work. That's that's something we apply pretty frequently. And uh, you know, when he left I had to play bass, so even I, I just couldn't get, I couldn't get my fingers in shape in time, so I played the whole thing with a pick. But yeah, I think as a, you know, that we got like, you know, we got a song in there like called "Fool Song," where I was just like, doing the Carol K thing. And, sure, you know, we're just yeah, having why not? fun with having yeah. fun with that. But uh, also, you? you know, the the record, the record really w- was the record of you know somebody who's beginning to like see their sort of demons uh you know coming yeah. coming yeah. more to the forefront so i think the, the lyrical realism on that becomes a little more uh po- poignant uh than blue because I, I've, I i think yellow and green i was like i felt fairly comfortable writing from a personal standpoint in a more obvious way than i was with blue they're always very they're always all personal songs but i was letting the language you know i was putting a finer point on it more more frequently so i think you know yeah. again it was all of that was new territory to us and, and exciting to do because of its newness yeah 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 and and then you get to you know you get to kind of like lean into like whatever that is and it, it, yeah when you when you're doing it when you're doing a two album thing yeah you, you know? can do whatever I mean, you can do whatever, whatever you want, you want. <laughs> yeah, and you can go and, and i was like okay well well it'll be two album things so we'll call it yellow and green and yeah. we'll, we'll sort of make yellow the normal to greens sort of out there right but i was like we're not gonna we're not gonna totally do that there's just one's just gonna be like a little straight a little more leans this way than le- leans yeah, that yeah, way. yeah 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 okay uh, yeah but you know i thought i i love that you know it was it was, it was super fun to write those songs because uh, i think we must have just been trying to write simple ideas i don't know where we went wrong after that we just started, <laughs> really that's we started awesome. becoming yeah, okay so crazy dense again after that i mean blues really blues really dense it's more like yeah it's more like orchestral music uh but then it then we then we were you know we were using beyond yellow and green we're starting to use more much more like sophisticated or you know uh symphonic t- 
terms and, and dissonances. And, well, and John Congleton is like, you know, yeah. that, that, that's right up, the, right up his alley. So that's, sure, you know, sure. to, to good results, I would say. <laughs> yeah, and I think, I think he, he and both he and Dave uh, pulled something really great out of us. I yeah. think they, I, I didn't know it. I didn't re- really understand what was, I didn't really have this perspective at the time, but I realized now in retrospect that, one of the real value of, of those those two individuals uh, to musicians is that they see the thing in you that is really unique. They identify it almost on a psychologic level, yeah. And they pull it out of you through the, you know through their um, their their filter their uh... through their filter, but 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 also under their guidance. So it's like ah, a sure. safe. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's like no 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 do it man. And I'm like, it's this is good. This it's is good. it's like when you're you know? uh, germinating plants, right? Yeah, because I'm just like because I'm just like, well, you know, Dave Dave was sort of asking, you know, when we first had our first conversation, and John when we first had a conversation, I just sort of like tried to, you know, John John understood my musical background a lot better. You know, John was like Neurosis, yep. Slayer, yep. Jesus Lizard, yep. Fleetwood Mac, like okay, cool, Radiohead. That's what you want to do. Great, we're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, I think Dave was Dave was more like, yeah, where how how far do you want to go? You right, know? And right. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I want to see what the boundary is, and I yeah. want to do it carefully. And he's like, well, you know, we'll be as careful as we can be. Well, hence purple, right? Which is a, yeah, hence purple and hence, hence gold, hence gold and gray. But yeah. but yes, and hence purple, which um, you know, you purple you. It's, it's impossible to mention purple without mentioning that you know immediately following the release of yellow and green we were in a horrible bus accident i was yeah. injured yeah. tremendously bad i still suffer daily from from that injury it's it's you know it was a it was a big 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 turning point in my life because it was the closest to death that you get yeah um, so you know due to the injuries and you know just the reality of coming off of that record and, and you know having written a, such a seemingly like prophetic record and said so many stupid yeah. things in the press before it came out. I'm like, Oh, imagine, you know, I think the cover I described as like, imagine that moment before the act of violence. And I said, I think like, imagine that moment before the car drove up the cliff, you know? And, yeah. and I was like, Oh my God, what a, what a crazy coincidence. Anyway, purple is sort of just me dealing with that. And, uh, you know, I think Pete, Pete, uh, was a really important part of that record because I think, you know, when, when the rest of the band was like, no, due to injuries or, or whatever reason, can't do this anymore. I think he, I think he understood and, you know, in a very like, you know, deep and human way that like I needed to continue. And if to keep moving forward, someone yeah. wasn't watching me from moving forward, that it, you know, might not be moving, you know, in a, in a positive direction. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and I think I mean what I'm saying is like in in in, in clearer terms. I think he understood how important the band was to me, you know, and my right. creative health is a, is a fairly important thing to me. So you know, so we came together and did this record, and I I, I remember talking to Friedman for the first time, and I was like, well, what do you think? What do you think? Like, like what would you you know like what what's your input? Here's some here's some like like nascent versions of songs, and he was like. I think it would be cool to hear what you guys do if you try to write a focused, straightforward, direct record. And I was like, coming from him, I definitely want to hear what that sounds. Like. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. Because I know. Yeah. Because I know. Th- I know the net result will be not what exactly. Yeah. So Absolutely. the songwriting, you know, so so it was just about writing muscular songs, like, you know, they were all hyper emotional because I was in a hyper fragile state. Yeah. Uh, but Seb and Nick. Sebastian and Nick, our rhythm section, they just joined. Sad from Trans Am and Nick from, you know, uh, the New York jazz scene. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Cannot like, be overstated how crazy and, like, and badass it, <laughs> those it's, guys are. Yeah. It's, 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 they are. I feel like that's a rhythm section that I, I don't know how I earned it or, like, what I did yeah. to deserve it. But it is, it's a magic thing watching those guys. And they're very particular and different rhythmic personas matched together it's just a it's just a sight to behold it's psychotic yeah. and awesome <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like it's like it's psychotic and awesome and sexy and like yeah 
really competitive. It's it's amazing. Like it's amazing how they how they compete musically and form form like our, our you know perpetual rhythm machine. But yeah, so so they, but they didn't you know they're Nick and Seb didn't know our music that well or at all. Oh, when they joined. really? Okay, that's and, interesting. Like heard of but never really listened to. Yeah, they're like, oh, I I know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like but they're both of... such intelligent listeners that they right. they could when they did join and we started learning they they were like okay well uh, I you know I go oh Seb do that that's awesome Nick do that. That, that, that that like keep doing that yeah. that's awesome they'd be like yeah but that's, that might not be where where this band's at yet like like uh... we don't want to fuck up we don't want to fuck up the sound you know and I I always had a really interesting deep wow. level of respect because I would have yeah. gone cra- I would have gone crazy with it we could yeah. put out like a very funky record yeah you know? yeah yeah exactly um, just go ham from the beginning yeah you know sure 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 so and they were tempering it and at the same time they do have they do have like a very powerfully electric relationship when playing and it, yeah the music never sounds entirely relaxed i think it's i think it's a lot of sev is a he's he plays from hype he plays from muscle he's he's like the you know yeah he's like the picasso of drums like it's yeah it's a it's a it's a very powerful experience and i think it worked really well to offset the the sort of melancholy that i had yeah well i mean it, it's because it's almost like the dead opposite of how you, of how, <laughs> how you're like yeah. feeling in, with the with those tunes yeah. right so it's like so, you know so you I get thought, this I dichotomy it, yeah yeah so i thought that was cool i just made it added a nice continuity and and, and like flavor uh, texture to that record um that's you know it's not like goofy it's not goofy it's like it's like very we're like very lovingly trying to say the exact opposite thing in in terms of energy but uh because of that we sort of meet in the middle and create this sort of central thing i think it's it's really it's kind of a magical thing but you know after we did that record they 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 always give me a hard time now because they're like yeah it's like sad you're like sad christmas you write sad christmas songs they're like he's really like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like really hooky but yeah. super yeah. super bittersweet just don't um, listen to the lyrics. lyrics yeah exactly yeah, yeah just don't listen to the lyrics. anyway i was you know i thought that was cool and i think you know in doing that record with us they learned what, what we are and what what yeah you know is, is sort of like where my vision aligns with the reality of like being just being a rock band right my vision's like oh dude we're like creators we're artists <laughs> Um, <laughs> right yeah exactly I, I mean I, i'm saying that jokingly but I believe it. no but it's it's also 100 percent true and it's and if yeah. some and, and the thing is that wouldn't work for everybody too like no, or if, they, no, or if no, they're no, not meeting it on that it's level a, it's critical it's, it's critical that everybody understands that because it's it's right. really it can really be a powerful opposing force if you're not on you got a player that's there's there to make right. the donuts so, and it's like okay so, this isn't gonna know, fly <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I was, I was just like f- super fortunate. Like the, basically the first two guys that walked through the door, not only have this chemistry with one another that they, they never met each other, you know? They yeah. Just yeah. This and they're just thing. live wire, you know, off yeah, of each like, other. It's like, it's like, it's like the Will Ferrell step brothers movie, whatever. That's, what, that's who they are. They're like, they're like that. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, constant, yeah, yeah. It, it's constant like energy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's you know, great. Like, so, so that was, it was cool. Cause I was like, Oh wow, we can really, we can really develop we can grow now, you know, yeah. this is this, like, I was afraid we would, you know, might, might remain stagnant. Uh, and then, you know, through the purple touring, which I think was really su- successful for us. And we were, we were working very hard at that point. Yeah. Um, we, you know, Pete decided to leave the band. And I think, cause I think he realized that uh, my lifestyle and dedication to the group was likely to continue. And, right. that, you know, he wanted, he just needed it's not really a phase to like, well, he just, yeah, he just had to do it. He, he wanted other things out of life and, and like, yeah, yeah. Like, Hey, I can't like the schedule is too crazy and I can't balance it. And, and so it was, you know, a very, very amicable kind of split. And, and, and good for him for recognizing that and not, you know, not staying yeah, and, along. Yeah. Whatever. Cause, cause of course it's like, it's always, per- business. it's always personal. It's never, yeah. it's right. never business <laughs> first at least. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it was like, let's, let's do this the right way because we have so many, you know, let's not be cliche basically. And, yeah. you know, thanks, thanks to him. Because I think that was something that he really felt strongly about and it allowed, you know, ha- adding Gina to the band. Gina, who is amazing. Yeah. It's... Yeah. Like it allowed that to happen. And, you know, I think in Gina, I found a very, very like powerful musical compatriot and somebody who I shared a deep 
chemistry with. Yes. And that's, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't think you, I think it's priceless. I think having a chemistry with somebody who makes you better as a musician, but, but also there's a, you know, there's sort of a personal chemistry too. I think that's, it does matter. It is priceless. Yeah. So yeah. the four of us create this thing now. And because we've, because we, you know, we, we first, we, went in and did golden gray and then with golden gray i was like all right there's been so many changes now right 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 so (laughs) this seems like the time to really lock things in and just be a normal band for a little bit yeah which maybe maybe one or two of them thought was okay and they're gonna happen but i i think what we did was we created a sonic warfare machine We totally no the, no like like inadvertently the, we, right <laughs> we took the idea of density you're, you're like the oppenheimer of of uh <laughs> it, it was, it was yeah, like, it wasn't the intention but uh yeah well no it wasn't not the intention. it wasn't not the I mean, intention either yeah 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 like well what what's the what is what does 24 guitar sound like stack yeah them, yeah, yeah let's check it out let's find, uh, out, let's find out let's find out yeah let's find out it felt like like we we felt like we were part of a weird psychedelic cult i mean we kind of were at that point and uh and yet there's some crazy sophisticated songwriting in there it's so sophisticated and all the instrumental stuff on there too like all the uh it's a (laughs) mind-blowing it's a mind-blowing composition yeah it's heady as fuck it's very very heady i'm extraordinarily proud of creating that slab of sonic annihilation (laughs) right no no it's yeah i mean uh so i think that that you know and i think that pushed gina like beyond her limit and i think it gave her i think it gave her sort of a crash course in what we were and right. then and then we toured for ages a and long was, time yeah we just like grew into a powerful band and we're, we're a little bit out of shape right now but it feels so good with these three to to like this thing that we like combine into it feels so incredible to me i mean just you know, just in a personal way like it's nice it's nice it feels sort of beautiful but uh we can we when we really get in shape we've got this we've got a weird skill i'm like yeah it's like one of these things where it's like how do we you know like why doesn't anybody else do that and it's like why would anybody else do that you know? like, <laughs> yeah how do you right? quantify it even what yeah, yeah like, you know it's like, like okay like yeah it's like well, a lot of times we just start issuing challenge anyone, coins to other bands or why something. Yeah. Would anyone else want to write music like we did? It's like <laughs> it's insane sometimes. But um, right, I think that the insanity of that record gave birth to you know in in this one record in the past myopia. You you say okay, well if that one is about density and layers and embellishments and complex arrangements and denser chord structures and more root note avoiding than we can possibly do <laughs> uh, sure yeah 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 <laughs> maybe we just need to ignore root that note. And, and maybe we need to take uh maybe we need to take that on the road and and just like put ourselves we put ourselves through the grinder on those yeah stars. we just became really like fluent musically and you know through the we were on tour in europe for three months uh at the end of 2019 yeah playing to between 35 and 65,000 people a night. Listen, I mean, you you are forged into something harder when yeah. you do that. I mean, I'd be fine playing to 35 to 60 people a night, you know, but it's like yeah. but it's like if they're no, there, but like when you're I'm telling you like I couldn't I couldn't walk <laughs> into that I couldn't walk in front of that crowd tomorrow. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cuz you have to you have to ramp it's up. Pro sports, man. You you have to you have to be it. Yeah, you, you in have every to, way. It's you really have to be the there. Yeah. yeah, you have to. You have to. You have to get. You have to train for it for sure. You have, you have to. Um, you have to be ready, so you don't have to get ready. Right, and yeah, exactly. And we came off of that. We came off of that, which was really the first tour on first and only tour on Golden Gray, and then the yeah. lockdown down yeah. happened. So we never really got to. We never really got like proper support tours for it. Uh, but when we came out, you know, what we what we had to start off with was we had just been forged into a very solid substance yeah. that allowed us to, to, you know, to get in and do stone the way that we did it. So let's talk about stone because uh, again, depending on if, if you're engaging with the show live, it's not out yet, but most people are going to be 
by the time most people hear it, it's it's going to be out. Um, and let's let's do a song by song with it. I think I think it's an interesting record. And uh, yeah. I, I I have a I have a feeling there's some there's some stories behind it. So anything you know you mentioned a couple things earlier on. Anything you know even like you know where the title came from. You know recording notes because I think you recorded this in an interesting way. You know like it's yeah. anything along those lines. Whatever comes to mind. Uh, let's start with embers. Yeah. So embers was when I when you know the, the final closing track on the record is called Bloom. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah. a song that Gene and I wrote in a single wide trailer in Central PA a couple months after we recorded the bulk of the electrified material on this record and it was a really you know it's a that's a it's a really sort of beautiful sort of complex and soft song that we wrote that felt, felt very serious and uh it, so i was sort of resistant about putting it on the and at the end of the record because i thought it, i thought there was something important about it but when it became clear that the sequence made most sense with that at the end, I thought, well, we, we sort of need a bookend. Yeah. Uh, Cause up until that point I, I had, th- and I'm a big, I'm big into sequencing up until Me too, that, yeah. we were going to begin the record with last word, which would have been unique for us. And then it would have been the only record that started with a drum fill. Uh, <laughs> we always, we always, I guess start so. With, sure. Yeah. We yeah. always start with ambience and noise. And yeah. And yeah. Like that. And, so I was kind of like into that, but something about it like nagged me and I was like, okay, I think I want to do the bookend thing. So we took an outtake from Bloom and it's just a, it's just like a tiny little phrase from that recording session on the porch of this single wide trailer with, you know, during the daytime, you can hear all the, <clears throat> you can hear all the wildlife around us. We're just in the woods, dogs barking and whatnot. Uh, so I took that little <clears throat> chunk of music and uh, played like a deep bass note on my piano to go along with it but my piano wasn't nearly in the key of the song no so it was really really ominous and sort of awful sounding and then i was then i I thought okay there this is a much more menacing rendition of this it's got that horror movie sort of vibe uh yeah (laughs) you know (laughs) you know gene and i become really interested in this and just just these sort of uh strange strange but but sort of like traditional sounding vocal arrangements right and uh we're really into this irish uh band called lankham mm. uh who does who do these inc- incredibly dirgy sort of abstract but but also more more traditional sort of celtic tunes um that sounds cool check it out the, uh they have some absolutely incredible songs uh, my favorite is called The Wren, like the bird, W R E N by Langham. Okay. It's an incredible song. I'll Watch them play it live. Anyway, that's my plug. Um, anyway, we were really influenced by that music and that sort of deep harmonized softness. And so we, yeah. we were, we were, we set, we reprised the melody from Bloom for the, the intro to the record and sang it in sort of a different way. But what would Gene and I do a lot on this record is we we sing simultaneously, sort of like old fashioned Nashville, uh, in, into a mic. So we bake in a lot of our performances. They're just, you know, we try to keep that sort of freshness on it. So that, that's what all that all that kind of singing. Nice. Is. I was wondering which a, one uh, came first. Uh, you know, like because well, when a book is like that, it was just built on. Yeah, it was built on that little outtake. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, that was a that was a pretty fun one to do. And then you know, last word is the first you know proper banger on the record you know uh and a cool six song, and change if i remember correctly yeah that's on yeah, there, yeah there's a lot of them there six and change <laughs> and that one um was easily one of the coolest collaborative efforts that i've been part of in, in the history of this band whereby everybody's written like very significant parts of the song you know, gina's yeah. written gina is it's based on a song that gina wrote uh it includes that big heavy riff up front I wrote the verse, Nick wrote the chorus, Seb came up with all these like drum extension ideas. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's like, we, we really, we really all came together on that song. And it, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but like, that's, that's a special thing for us to achieve. And so it yeah. seemed like a good, and you know, and it's got like a, an, what, a, what I like to call an unrehearsed solo on it. It's got, it's got like a wild. Yeah, we're just uh, kind of like. Top solo. Like which it, I've always maybe it's gonna connect, maybe it won't. We'll see. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't I don't always I've always had a, like a pretty hard line against those. 
Right. So I was like, if we're gonna do this, we we have to sort of let's make write it, something like, out. Let's figure um, something. Um, no, no, but like we just need to make it bold. Like, okay, if we're gonna do the thing that I don't historically want to do, I'm gonna make it louder than the mix. You know, like just like lean into your insecurities, kind of thing. Like uh, um, uh, that rock on um, Search and Destroy, right? The Stooges yeah. song, where just like that guitar yeah. comes in, you're like, oh my god, how is it possibly yes, that loud? Exactly, Jesus Christ! Exactly. <laughs> it, like it, it destroys the rest of the mix. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a that's a really good. That's you know, and and we would we would we would listen to like a lot of the Stooges things and that was more the end, you know, though the, though the, 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 it's an incredible solo. It's like very kind of like in the tradition of like Randy Rhodes, but it's played in the, you know, the tradition of Wayne Kramer or something. You know? Right. It's, totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to take those kind of bold steps on records because no one's telling you not to. And it's just like, well, what, Why not? You know, every little impulse you have, you can just follow immediately. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly, and, and and especially if you're working as you go, right? What would what would be the impetus not to? <laughs> right. Like, why, why exactly. would you? <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was you know that was a cool song, and it and it showcases this improvisational nature that I that you know that we were talking about a little bit earlier at the end. Sure. It's just yeah. like the song's over, and we while we were rehearsing and setting up mics and everything, we just did that every time. We just would constantly. It was almost like Nick and said just not one to be the last. To, to have the last word, so to speak. Um, right, yeah. Which is kind of weird because I even put it like that before I wrote the words or the title. Like, oh, which is what, yeah, I was just going to say, a, like, it's an apropos kinda, for the title. Just, uh, <laughs> Maybe it was a subconscious funny. thing, yeah. It's funny. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's it just, it was sort of like a cross-section of everything that we've done, everything that we do, and everything that we're going to do. It sure. felt like a good little minor uh, statement of intent. Whereas I think that the, that the falling track beneath the rose is like more the mission statement of the record um i can see that yeah yeah and it's, it's kind of a centerpiece was, yeah yeah it, that was the first that and the following two songs are part of the trilogy uh that are all related obviously it's a trilogy. Um, it's a, the, one would imagine <laughs> so, they are related yeah, yeah 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 just talking myself out of being dumb <laughs> uh, so yeah i mean that that song was the, the that opening riff in that song was written for, during the Golden Gray sessions, didn't really connect with anybody. But then, you know, at, when we came together uh, through, through lockdown to, to write music, I was like, well, I've got it and I still believe in it. So let's, uh, yeah. let's start with that and then, uh, you know, write the rest of that song is kind of a showcase of everything that we were just like super into musically at that time. You know, this, the opening salvo is kind of equal parts. Uh, reclamation by fugazi and oh, something sure. something yeah. really like extreme from like a french black metal band you know like yeah. really dissonant so we we're tr so just trying to like oh those two things are cool like that's what that sounds like cool let's start there and then you know and uh we i kind of you know the main riff in the song i so i was just trying to get like a little bit of a nirvana swagger but it turned into something totally different um uh, and, you know, and I just, it's just like, it was one of the first songs I wrote. I just wanted to write a big hooky kind of chorus spot. I wanted to give a classic space for, you know, one of our more sort of organized, structured harmonic leads and just kind of have some fun. In it. And yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a pretty fun song to, to, to write because it, it required a, quite a bit of like psychotic drumming from Seb and, yeah, yeah. It's... I think when when I heard that when when we were tracking and they and they the only recording we had was of Seb and Nick playing it. It was it's wild. It's just I got yeah. It's got to be gnarly. pretty. It's pretty gnarly on its own, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's... like it's such a nasty. Uh, like it's such a nasty groove, in it. and Nick plays like like super. It's like super grindy, sassy bass. It's 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 pretty awesome. It's kind of like it, like like his tone, and I think we I think we were somewhat intentional because he was kind of trying to do the the end whistle, won't get fooled again. Sure, that like yeah. spike of a of a bass sound. Yeah, which is like um, right, just right, like ubiquitously <laughs> bouncing in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I and I was I was really like into this George Eliot poem uh, that I read that was just felt really powerful to me when I read it called the, the Choir Invisible. 
Uh, so I just started with the, you know, the way that Paul made me feel and just kind of wrote yeah. a song on top of it. Um, yeah, it was a fun one because it's, it's like just trying out some different sorts of vocal deliveries. And, you know, Gina and I uh, kind of developed a, a few new ways that we come together vocally, like at some of the higher energy levels. You know, we're kind of like, oh, it sounds a little, we sound a little bit like X sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, totally. Um, and so we were, we were just, you know, having, having fun doing that, that sort of vocal delivery. And uh, yeah, that song was probably one of the earlier ones that we finished. I, I think, it's, I think it's a totally cool, weird song. It's got some new stuff in it, you know? Definitely. Yeah. That, and that I don't, I, and I think, I think, uh, I don't think anybody's going to really like it the first time they hear it. Sort of well, it's kind of dense. I mean, there's there's it's dense. It's super, it's super dense. <laughs> like the, chord, the, the bridge, the bridge. I wrote a chord progression that's like it takes like twenty, thirty seconds to get there, and it just it just gets higher. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the pitches get higher. The, and you're like, where's this going? The, yeah, you're like, Does it, stop, yeah. fucking chill out. Um, bridge to nowhere. Yeah. But you know, because that song had had that kind of density to it, uh, and because we we really thought. Or Seb, Seb was like seemed finally interested in like bringing a little trans end into the band. Uh, we decided to to do an experiment with uh, with a song following this choir, which was we start with the rhythm and the little guitar ostinato that ends uh, that ends beneath the rose, and we just see what happens. You know, just yeah. Let's let's play off of that. Let's and... let's have a let's have a like a. And again, this sounds a little cheesy, but I don't know how else to describe it. But like, let's have a little musical discussion, and sure, yeah, you know, let's ask questions and make responses and just see, you know, see what comes of it. And we got this like pretty, pretty bizarre uh, improv. I think that's the first one. It's fully improvised and it's more or less untouched. It's a few little like uh, overdubbed sound effects here and there, but it's it's basically. A, that's basically an improvisation with me, like imp improvising over a freestyle that I did one night and is, is the primary vocal track in that, uh, which was just a, this sort of bizarre love poem that I had written way too much of it. Was, it was like super long. And I just sat up one night and started speaking in the mic and yeah, found, you know, I've been interested in, sort of revisiting some of these things that we would do early in our career where, where I would speak or where I was allowed, you know, where I allowed myself to write something that had more of a sort of uh, like traditional, maybe kind of corny, but kind of traditional like poetic uh, meter to it. Sensibility. Um, or, uh, yeah, and be, yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I noticed that uh, we had been on tour just before I recorded that song with Lamb of God and Suicide Silence and Kill Switch Engage. Right. And we were just like this weird, like emotional little bunch of freaks amongst all this like really heavy hitting <laughs> sort of like tough guy. Loud, yeah. yeah. Like really, really <laughs> fucking aggressive metal. Yeah. Uh, and it was a good tour for us, but I adopted this, this sort of persona. Well, it was just a voice that I used when I was doing mic sets in between songs to sort of reach people that I didn't, I didn't really understand if they if, if we were connecting with them or not so i i right. just like the first time i was like i'm gonna do kind of like a wrestler guy or something you know i'm gonna sure i'm gonna yeah. do like a like an odd like meta take on that and a I, persona of some of, i started of, taking so, on yeah. this i started taking on this meter it just comes it comes really naturally to me but uh it was pretty hilarious because it, i wasn't like I wasn't joking around. I was like, I was genuine. I just kind of found this weird rhythm uh, yeah. that worked. That worked in the song. So I, I took, I took, I took something that I learned from tour in a very weird way. <laughs> yeah, made a starring gonna, character. Like, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna love this song. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's it's like it's an indulgent ride. But I think that you know, as I as had become very important to us that when we were improvising when we were being spontaneous or intuitive that we just not fall into the trap of soloing you know just don't right. just don't solo and let <laughs> everything happen don't let's let's you know and, and i'm saying this this is what 
this is mostly for me, you know, because sure. I'm just yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a, some music happen. Uh, so you know, so that song is really fun to do because it's just super random. We, you know, Gene and I strike these chords every so often that completely we we have no idea what the other person's chord or intention is, and so when you listen to them isolated, it's just like it's just like harmonic garbage. And I'll I'll be hit, you know we'll be hitting two completely dissimilar chords, but. I can feel her about to hit a chord and I only have so much time to like adjust to it. And it just so happened that through that, through that improvisation, everything sort of worked out in, a, in what, what felt to us a very cool way. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially yeah, it's, so it, it's, it make, makes a little sweet, right? A little sweet of a, yeah, <laughs> a song. It makes a little sweet. And then, uh, you know, then there was a point like pretty late in the, the entire recording where I felt that because we had this bookend idea, uh, because I knew that Beneath the Rose and Choir had to be, uh, they had to be put up against one another. I mean, they're rec- like the downbeat, downbeat one of is uh, the first choir of is, uh, is, the is, other is one. The, yeah. is the final, final Beneath the Rose. And we, yeah. we, we were like really, we, we thought we were being really smart. Like, okay, we'll set up a whole different drum kit, a whole different miking system in a different room. So the drums will sound different, but it'll be the same thing. Everybody will recognize that. And, you know, I just, it was, a, it was a fun it was a fun little experiment but you know where it ended i was like oh, this feel it needs like a little bow on the end of it uh, yeah to end to round out the side because it was i was sort of like practically thinking well i want i want this to feel that song didn't feel like it end, it like ended anything but i know this right. is gonna be the end of side b so we need another song maybe we'll have those acoustic passages be the and have it be a little more declarative by being something yeah. like slightly different. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just, and all, and also to, just to make the statement that like acoustic, for better or for worse, acoustic music is a very big part of the core of the madness, you know? Right. Right. Uh, so it's going to be grandpa's it's guitars be pre- as we established. Yeah. Right. Grandpa's guitars. Camp, you know, I, you've seen these metal magazines call it like campfire music or whatever. Like, yeah. All right. Whatever. Dude, yeah. yeah. Like, again, it's just, it's super diminutive. I get it. It's yeah. Yeah. Job. We get it. We get it. <laughs> uh, but you know, I think it's something we, it's something that we did. It's something we always done. It's, yeah. It's, you know, part of the record to me. And so I wrote, I was watching like a television show and there was a scene where these two girls were doing, um, like an open mic night thing, mm-hmm. singing the song. It was a terrible song. Can't even remember what the show was called, right. but I liked the chord progression. So I just, just kept strumming the chord progression after the scene ended, uh, hit like voice memo note record. And two minutes later had a whole song. written. So I was like, yeah, that's great. Uh, I was the Gina and I had always wanted to write. Yeah, I don't know if you know the uh, group uh, Amps for Christ. Oh, I played with Amps for okay. Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I thought yeah. maybe you did. I thought maybe you did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that is but, not a but, name I've heard in a while, though. Whoa. Okay. But we we love that song Edward uh, of theirs. Yeah, yeah. And it's like it's very lo-fi. It's very raw. It's very pitchy, and it's very all over the place. And that is sort of the vibe sometimes that she and I have. I mean, she's very, she's a very uh, controlled player when she wants to be, but she also understands how to play with me, which is to, to loosen up a little bit. So we just, we just like had a lot of fun trying to do our version, uh, productions in terms of production and presentation of, of like an Edwards style song that I had written. The night yeah. Before. Okay. Um, okay. And yeah, so I, I I love that little I love that song. It's it's so short, um, but it's it's a really it's a really fun one to play. Anyway, then that so side B of the LP because I, I think it up turns LPs and uh, this was just like a song I wrote that I just wanted to be like super super riffy, just riff 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 sure, riff, riff, yeah. riff riff just write riffs. Seb plays for the first time in the history of our band, four on the floor kick, backbeat. It's the only song we ever have that has that. Never happened before. I guess so, huh? Yeah. I never really thought about it, but yeah. So that that was the weird of that to me. Uh, and then, you know, because the song felt so, like, riffy and kind of tough, you know, knuckle-draggy, kind of had these moments in it. I, yeah. I, I thought it would be kind of fun to make this more dreamy than that, you know, and to, like, just find a different place to go with this this song, which feels as if it's telling me to be a little more savage or a little bit more course yeah uh so so yeah i mean it was interesting because we recorded all these songs in some cases a year or a year and a half before i recorded vocals so the key of that song i was kind of stuck with and that you know it was it was a really interesting thing where we just kind of had to find a vocal style that fit the key of the song uh 
Uh, oh, sure. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, and it's going to be you're far afield from it from when you made it. Right. So, right. Yeah. So, so you also have to be careful not to, not to overdo it, not to overthink it. You got to just, right, right. Because the spirit of the recording was like so immediate and, and everything. We wanted the vocals to, you know, match that, uh, that level, you know, that sort of recording integrity. Yeah. So, anyway, that's, you know, that sounds cool. It's three and a half minutes. I don't know. Every once in a while, I like to prove that I can still you can, write you- something. <laughs> You prove that you can yeah. do it. Uh, yeah, so anodyne is um, that's a like free from pain, right? Like if I remember correctly, right. that's like the, the the definition of that. Any any, and it, it also sort of has this connotation for being like it's it's also used in a, in sort of an insultory ways as being like boring or like like very gray, very uh, lukewarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and um, yeah, a lot of a lot of the sort of like immediate inspiration lyrically for these songs was sort of some of it or some of it was sort of from dreams and i i'm like i, I hate when people explain their dreams so i want to explain <laughs> it to you, but just to say that uh i think i made the mistake once already this this year and like trying to oh yeah we'll have this dream and it's recurring it's an awful dream it's a night it's kind of a nightmare but uh, I, I think it's it's a it's sometimes those things are cool lyrical fodder because you you write sure. You write your song, and then you, you have years to figure out what you're what the fuck you're writing about. Yeah, yeah. And if um, you can just get if you just get down like a phrase or something, and you can build around it. Like, where did that come from? Be like, ask yeah. unconscious me. I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> no clue. Yeah, that was, a, that was a that was a fun, very challenging, very 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 challenging song to write uh, or to finish. Uh, it's also just a cool sounding word. Anodyne is just a like legit cool yeah. sounding word too. Like it is a, it is a good word. <laughs> and I've and I've been yeah. I've, I mean I have like and books and lyrics and like, poems and whatnot and i just have i found that word like popping up over and over again it's like when when innocuous is just too banal to use yeah, but... <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. that's all anodyne oh okay sure <laughs> what's it what whatever you say keats okay uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh shine is the next one and yeah shine um i wrote a song is built on uh the apex twin song number three. Oh whoa Okay. Yeah, I, t- I love that. I was crossing the Brooklyn Bridge in a Brooklyn last a couple of years ago, and the sun was going down. It was like that that moment of dusk where like everything's like super important, and everything you know you feel everything a little bit more deeply. Yeah. And that song came on like my Spotify list, uh, and I and so I gave it like a deep listen and had a, had a really cool moment with it. And I was like, you know what? Taking taking that chord progression, that is cool, and I hear music in it. So yeah, uh, it's just sort of built on that, and then it then it sprawls in a million directions and becomes like sort of like Zeppelin scoring and Ennio Morricone song. There's a little bit of Thin Lizzy. Everybody plays a Glockenspiel. There's a big the, the acoustic uh, the acoustic and sort of electric. Like uh, no quartery sort of intro to that song. Yeah, is, very much that that era of Zap. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a it's a cut and paste from the demo I recorded. I just thought it sounded so good that anything I would any anything we would do would be to try to approximate that sound. And I was like, well, there it is. We it's, already have it. It's right here. It works. It works. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. so it's like it funny in. because we we was, you know we in in some cases the records put together out of like strange Frankenstein parts. Um, right. Right. No, that's cool though, and it's also in some like that's not. It's it's like this convergence and you know ebb and flow of like focus and lack of focus. It's cool. Uh, Magnolia. Magnolia, uh, first song I wrote uh, for this specifically for this record. Uh, I wrote it while my magnolia tree was blooming. I recorded it while my magnolia tree was blooming and i mastered it while the magnolia tree was blooming so oh, wow. it seemed appropriate magnolia triumvirate <laughs> yeah so uh triple threat. Th- this one's sort of like we don't this record doesn't have the big heavy emotional ballad like some of our records do like yeah, i yeah. like my favorite songs to write are those yeah. this is close to it this is close to our. There's, there's some a pathos. There's some. Yeah, there's. This is like our mid paced for fans of glue. <laughs> you know, sort of. Right, thing. right, right, right. It's got a little bit. It's got sort of a little bit of an old school swagger, uh, and you know, a lot of like I guess familiar to us elements. But um, 
it also follows an insanely long arc. It has you know, I like I like we really love the sort of beautiful intros of these songs. This yeah, yeah. Sort of vignette tune that happens before the song, and then we're screaming at the top of our lungs at the end. So I like, yeah, I love that song. And uh, the following song, Under the Wheel, is another one of my favorites on this record. Uh, Nick, uh, our bass player, wrote the, the bass line in the song that, that, that everything's built on. Mm-hmm. And it was so... It's a good bass line. It took line. me so long to learn it. It sounds so easy. Or it sounds... It doesn't sound easy. It sounds simple. There's a, or there's a simplicity to it. Yeah. I'm trying to say this right. There's a simplicity to that bass line that is not real. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, because it's deceptive. It's deceptively simple. It's, I think the term. It's right? yeah. very hard to find. I get lost in it a lot, but um, yeah, I have this really old like vintage '62 Gibson ES330. Don't need gear talk, but it's a, it's like the oldest guitar, most vintage guitar I've got, and <clears throat> I just wanted that. I wanted to tune that down to mm-hmm. like. Corn level, level. <laughs> Kowloon Wall City level. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, it is. It's just drop down. Drop B or something. It's drop A. Even worse, yeah. Yeah, the song's in drop A. Yeah. Um, and my. That did you ever hear that? Did, did you ever hear the cartographer song? What's that? Did you ever hear the uh, the cartographer song? Drop A is a ridiculous no. tuning. <laughs> it is a ridiculous tuning. <laughs> um, that's why our EPs were recorded in Drop G. <laughs> I was it, dude. I was like, I was it. I was like, Amazing. oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, screw you. It's going screw even you, lower. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be... Let's go so low. It doesn't sound low anymore. It didn't. It sounded just right. like, it sounded like it swung back around. We, uh, yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like. I, I really had a fun time writing under the wheel because its dynamic structure is every two bars it gets louder it just and it never yeah. really stops it yeah yeah stops. it just gradually like so intensifies for all like six part, plus yeah yeah and it doesn't it's like somewhat not repetitive but yeah it was a fun sort of linear like let me fi- try to find dynamics in an upward slanting like straight line yeah so, yeah <laughs> well and then, and then kind of a new texture of, of, a, of a song for us too right right yeah, so and, and, and that's sort of like, again. and then what do you do after that, right? Like, well, then you got Bloom, yeah. so it's like it's because it, yeah, you're gonna try to get more intense. Okay, I mean, I guess yeah, you could, yeah. but <laughs> then then you're gonna hear us. You're gonna hear Gina and I like intensely serious about writing a folk song, like intensely right, right. committed to to finding something in traditional sort of Americana folk country songwriting, and which which we love, which is. Yeah, so influential on us. It's 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 impossible not to mention it at this point. Uh, you know, like artists like Gillian Welch, Dave Rawlings, like the, those. They're major, major songwriting influences on Gene and I. Uh, so we felt like we had finally we finally understood the form well enough to distort it a little bit to put it through your meat grinder of of whatever yeah, it is you do in, yeah. a, in a in a respectful way and in, in a genuine and sincere way. Make some so folk I, sausage, yeah. It was a really, it was a really demanding record to, to create, uh, yeah. but always very fun and always felt inventive and always felt like we, you know, had found another like rock in the proverbial river to turn over and explore. It's pretty cool, man. Like, uh, so yeah, Stone, uh, again, most people, by the time they hear this, it'll already be out because it's the 13th right now. It comes out on the 15th. Um, a, a Braxton Hymns, right? Which we didn't even it's my label. Yeah. Didn't, oh, yeah. even, didn't even get into that, which is like it's, yeah, it's all. It's also happens to be effectively a DIY record. Yeah, it's more or less. I don't. There needs to be a term that isn't bedroom label or vanity label because I'm sick of hearing yeah. both of those things. But like, yeah, right. it, it's it, it's using the formats and tools that we have in this day and age to directly connect with the audience. Uh, therefore, why it's all the and more to, important. Yeah, and to and if for no other reason than to be you know a professionally active band that has control over their own masters. Yes, yeah, yeah. and and they're I mean God, I, yes. Like, <laughs> just I'm just gonna say it you again. Know, musicians have to advocate for themselves. Like we all have a way to do it. This is this is one way that we have to you know maintain a little bit of independence. And yeah, it makes a whole lot more work. That's not, not, it's like a, it's an exponential curve in terms of work. 
Um, but you know, I think I think that when you when you're able to do something and you know just like have a genuine hubris free pride about what you do like i think that's that's a you know that can be nothing but a good thing if it's based on independence and hard work and cooperation and then when you know something doesn't work out for us we just fucking learn a lesson like, learn a lesson like, move nothing, on nothing yeah. more yeah nothing more nothing less like it's it's a it's been a good experience to, to make this record because it's 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 been about making the record and it's been about right you know the whole the whole the whole process has been really like critical to us it doesn't you know nobody else seems to even find it interesting at all but you know for us we had a, we had a great experience well it, it it can shine without the context of knowing all of those things too you right. know which is which is good like you know it's <laughs> you don't require the documentary to enjoy the music <laughs> right and you know this also i think this was the the most interesting record for us to have documented and we didn't we were we were <laughs> we were in session we were in a yeah. session <clears throat> in the studio we built for excuse me a month and i think there's maybe 10 to 15 pictures that anybody took total and it's mostly of mics <laughs> and you could have made like a, like a mini series on this or like a streaming yeah. series and and people like eat that up you know like yeah, no, but, I mean, yeah. but but not know, where you're at think, not what you're thinking about i think yeah. i think it, it allows uh, uh it allows the the experience for us to drift very quickly into like the stuff of legend for us but it's you know it's for us so we get to tell the yeah. story and we don't have to let the truth get in the way yeah. print the legend <laughs> right that's what they say yeah, print yeah. Legend. <laughs> uh i i mostly ignore comments uh while we're doing the show but this is a good one from zach Parrish. uh given that you are so involved in so many different forms of artistic expression how do you maintain your focus without feeling overwhelmed oh i, I wish i could maintain my focus without feeling overwhelmed yeah uh, I mean, there's times where it's better and where it's worse, but uh, I I struggle to create a way to balance that sort of thing out in my life yeah. because when you're in when you are involved in so many creative endeavors and you, know, <laughs> you have the good slash bad slash good again misfortune of uh, having th some demand on your work. And every every project that you could get involved with is exciting. It's hard to say no. You know, it's it's yeah. it's, it's really hard to say no. Uh, it's also hard to predict uh, the timelines on creative enterprises sometimes. So what what ends up happening to me is very frequently what I think is going to take me a week takes me ten months. You know, and throughout that other you know other things sort of accrue. And I think I think it can be difficult, uh, but I think the more that I treat what I do as one single profession. That's just being, you know, just being an artist generally. Like, right. You know, uh, there's a visual aspect. There's a, there's the, a the media aspect. may be different, but it's all art ostensibly. Right. Yeah. But, but knowing that personally and making professionally making a line in the sand that separates the two has been helpful for me because I don't have to Got it. compartmentalize in, I don't have to compartmentalize the drive to do either w one thing or the other, but I do, benefit from compartmentalizing it in the real world so you know the the like professional aspect of my music is separate in some ways from the professional aspect of my, of my artwork but uh it feels the same when you're making any of it um, so right right if you're if, if you're making art you're making art and it's gonna hit the yeah, way and you just kind of art. like i just have to i just sort of have to follow follow my gut and sometimes the you know sometimes that's requires a little bit of organization I'm fortunate that I have a caring wife who puts up with uh, overloads and uh, tells me when I'm overextended. Uh, That's good. So, yeah. yeah. It's good to have those you double checks. You don't, you don't not get overwhelmed. Right, you know? right. It's all exciting. Uh, John, this has been great, man. Thanks for spending so much time yeah. with me. This has been awesome. Appreciate it. Uh, records out. I'll put it in the show notes for everyone. Again, just can't uh, stress enough. And people that engage with the show know, but... Always bears repeating any sort of independent enterprise, be they a band you know or a band you never heard of, it is incumbent upon all of us to become, you know, become the megaphones and, and let people know uh, yeah. because nothing happens in a vacuum. And it's just get, get anything over in this day and age is a minor no, miracle. Anyone pays any attention to anything at all, really. <laughs> that's why this this upcoming week, you know, when the record's released, we're spending a, like roughly a week uh, touring around the East Coast, uh, Mid Atlantic. 
and playing in specifically independent record stores because I think that I love that. That's great. One thing that people in scene oriented genres can forget, don't always, but I think it, I think the sort of unsung heroes are the independent music uh, yeah. retailers. Uh, they work hard. They work hard. It's a and they're very thankless they're very, game. <laughs> it's, a th- it's, a th- it's a thankless game, but like you know, like any true musician will tell you, it's the money is like the money if you can find it yeah if you can find it it's not the primary goal it it must be (laughs) fantastic but you know not why you're doing it you you're you're still making music without it you just don't have the the, quite the freedom to to do so yeah if you're looking for money you would have developed an app and yeah and and so i think that's an app i think it's an app description of of the record store industry and yeah at, at the independent label Fortunately for for us right now is a, is a good time. So you know, f- for independent resellers, because you know, I, I don't know Taylor Swift. That might just it might just be that simple. But um, you know, we we always we always feel like it's 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 important for people like us who who've been veterans of the music industry and the underground scene for so long to m- and make sure that we appreciate and prefer that your money gets spent at your yes. local music independent retailer it matters that is this that is the often um left out of the picture part of uh, any any healthy music community any healthy music ecosystem requires a place where people can go and ask a clerk what are you yeah. into i like this yeah, what are you li- this? what are you listening to these days oh, i'm listening to like yeah. here's three things you never heard of great i will pick up all yeah. those yeah it's awesome. not it's not algorithmically accurate it's 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 accurate in the human way. yes and we we much appreciate that and much prefer that so we do what we do what we can to you know put our money where our mouth is and however you say put your art <laughs> But where your art, where the, whatever, you know what, (laughs) it's not my business where you put your art, put it wherever you want. Uh, You know, John, this has been great. Uh, Last question. This is the only canned question I ever ask, and you can choose to interpret it however you like, but why do you do what you do? Uh, Because I have to. I don't, I don't, I can't, I can't help it. I can't turn this off ever, seemingly. (laughs) Yeah, it's a. It's what I love doing. It just happens to dovetail very nicely with what I have to do and what I'm driven to do. So, yeah. Why, for one, I'm glad that uh, you're doing it. And Stone, pick it up, everybody. Uh, link link in the show notes. John, thanks so much, man. Yeah, appreciate it. I'll, I'll hopefully see you in November with Chap Isle in Chicago, actually. We'll, we'll, we'll see. It looks like I'll be around. So. Yeah, awesome. Can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Take care, brother. Awesome, man. Yeah, have a good night. There he goes, John Baisley. Let's hear. Uh, um, let's hear last word. This is we talked about this one. And good representation. <laughs> or let's maybe hear it. I guess. <laughs>
There you go. Last word. That's off Stone, the new, latest record by Baroness. And that is on, um, well, you go to baroness.bandcamp.com for one, yeah. if you're so inclined. Uh, Abraxan Hymns, available on many awesome formats. That was great. That was John. That was John from Baroness. Uh, great guy. That was, that was awesome. Been a long, long time coming to have him on the show. So glad to be able to do that. Hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. It's a bunch of record store dates coming up for them. And then, uh, yeah, a bunch of uh, bunch of other tour dates, including the one single one that I mentioned <laughs> in Chicago in uh, November. But there's, there's a bunch of them. Go, go to uh, yourbaroness.com. Playing with Kent Mode, playing with uh, Primitive Man, much of a bunch of good dance. Anyway, name of the show is Code New Times Bertrand Reversal. Thank you so much for listening to it. As we come to the close of our broadcast day, the show airs Thursdays usually, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Streaming live on YouTube and Twitch. Farewell, transmission. You can find the archives of the show for free all the time, always. Bertrandreversal.com. No ads, no sponsors. No kidding. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. But if you like the show and you want to get episodes sooner, Anyone $1 a month at patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal will achieve that goal gladly, and it also uh, helps uh, keep the lights on. Not to put too fine a point on it. So it's always appreciated when people, watts of when people dig into that. A bunch of good stuff coming up. Uh... Not going to announce some of it, but some of it I will. Uh, Code Neutron, Secret Friends tour dates, October 4th to 14th, West Coast with Lung, NeutronFriends.BandCamp.com. There's some cool stuff coming. Stay safe out there. Can you hear me now? And check you later. Out on Route 128, in the dark and lonely. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the... It's the end of radio! The last announcer plays the last record! The last what? Leaves the transmitter! Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now?
it really broadcasting if there's no one there to receive? It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day. 